Oh, yeah, Merle Haggard. We lost Merle Haggard at the age of 79 years old. On his birthday. On his birthday, yes. Good morning, Jim Norton. It sucks because I had plans for him. You had plans? Uh, you, you bought him a gift? I did, yeah. What, what it was a you... coffin, so it worked out. <laughs> God. Good old Merle Haggard. I, you know what? I, I don't know much about Merle Haggard. I'm not going to front, but uh, every time you hear one of his songs, you're like, oh, my God, that's pretty damn good. So. Yeah. Uh, we got to go right to the phones. Uh, Jim Brewer was supposed to be here this morning, and he's not going to be here. And his story is uh, quite a good one. So I want to say good morning to my pal, Jim Brewer. What's up, Jimmy? I, you know, <laughs> Ford is fucking retarded. You're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're thinking about getting a Ford, yeah. don't, buy, don't buy or rent a fucking show. Because they don't have spare tires. Why wouldn't you and have a spare tire? They don't carry spare fucking tires. So now, all right, so now I got to call roadside assistance. So right. I call roadside assistance. I go, now what do we need done? I said, I need my tire changed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you have a Ford show? Unfortunately, we, we, don't, we, they, we don't just carry those tires. You have to go to the dealership. Okay, well, then let's get to the dealership. Well, the dealership's not open, so we can't call you right now. So I gotta sit in the fucking parking lot staring at Morristown garbage. <laughs> <laughs> while, while, while my fucking tired can't be, I can't even change it. That is. I just, yeah, go ahead. How fucking retarded is that? A Ford show. Yeah. Ford Ford show does not come with tires. How what? retarded is that? That is really retarded because I, I mean, can tell you that. Because tell you, you that. I mean, you're lucky you're in a in a pretty you know busy city. Imagine you're in the middle of nowhere and you uh, <laughs> you fucking get a flat and and you can't yeah. replace the tire anytime soon. Yeah. What if I'm in the mahogany desert? <laughs> mahogany, <that> the mahogany. <laughs> Hey, is it possible, uh, do they offer you, like, can you get a, tire, a spare tire in the trunk? Because sometimes they give you the option, and maybe you didn't realize it and just didn't take the option to get an extra one. Oh, shit. No, is they might have. No. No? No. There's no option. No, I would have I said, if they said, listen, mm -hmm. here's a heads up. You just need to know yeah. these cars don't come with spares. Yeah. So, uh, wow. you know, you might want to think of buying one. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'll buy one. How much is it? Three thousand dollars. What? Right. Uh, I'm, that that is just really strange. Can you walk us through what happened this morning? Because I, I was pretty damn excited yeah. to have Jim Brewer in the studio today, and you were you were making your way to the city. You were going to do the whole show with us, and then what happened? Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm glad it's funny now. Uh, at right. this time being, because uh, well, anyway. So, well, I saw the, I saw the, I saw the videos that you sent me. They're hilarious. <laughs> You're not a happy boy. But anyway, go ahead. Well, well, first of all, for me to come in, it's already a project. It's yeah. not like it, I have to beat the uh, traffic coming in. So, if, if I want to be there. I'd, Seven seven thirty. I gotta leave around five wow. five thirty. Wow! Because if I if I leave past that, then I'm dealing with crazy traffic. Sure. So, which is all right. So I got up. I had a shower. Life was good, and I get in the car. There's no one on the road. I'm happy. As soon as I get on the highway, I don't think I was on ten seconds. I swear to God, I thought I ran someone over. Wow. I heard, I went, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Did I run? I really thought I hit an animal or a person. And I and I, and I, kind of looked back. It looked like a hole. And I, please, please don't say tire pressure low. Yeah. As soon as I said that in my head, it went, bang, tire <laughs> pressure low. Like, Son of a bitch. So now... I mean, please just get me to an exit. Please don't be stuck on the highway like a fucking jamoke. So I made it. I made it to an exit. And right off the exit is a Hyatt. 
is a I'm not a Hyatt. It's called the Hyatt Place or whatever. And I had a cross and divider. I cut off some cars. And you just look like a loser when you got a flat. You just hear it's loud. I'm pulling into the driveway. I'm like, oh my god, this is. So yeah, that's that's my. Uh... So you, you obviously hit a pothole in it, and it uh, it made your tire yeah. flat. Yeah, and if you're getting on 287 North from Morristown, beware. It's as soon as you get on, as soon as you get on the highway. Otherwise, you're going to be parked right next to fucking me, and you better hope you don't have a Ford show. So you, you had no idea there was no spare tire? I would never think to look. No. And the, I, there's, a, there's a flat. You know, in the back, in the, in the trunk, Jimbo, there's, you can... There, there's like a flat thing, yeah. and I just assumed under there, sure. right? Like in all cars, yeah. Is you're, you lift it up, and there's the tire. There's no tire. It's just a. I wish I could Facetime you. Well, it's just a big fucking empty space. Well, does it look like a tire goes there? Meaning that you no. chose not to no. have the option of having a spare tire. <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. no. Okay. You know what? Oh. No. There isn't. No, okay. If you look at it, at least you can go, oh, all right, I wouldn't have known this. Man, but if you open, if you lift the flap up, there's literally, it looks like um, a space where one of those the spare tires, not, not an actual tire, a little tire might yeah. go. But a actual, donut. Actual tire. Well, what is yes. What is going on with dealerships these days? I mean, the the amount of money we spend on a car, you would assume they would throw in a tire just for shits and giggles, and just in case you get a, a fucking flat tire. They they should definitely. You know what? If yeah. you get a Ford show, the first thing they should tell you is you don't have a spare tire, and here we're gonna give you one. God forbid you. Yeah. You uh. Get a flat. Well, that's extremely vulnerable because what you're saying is you don't have a, a, a spare tire in your car. You got a flat, so then you're like, ah, this is a pain in the ass. But I'll at least go to a you know a gas station, or whatever, and they'll replace my tire. But now you're being told that it's a special tire that no one really yeah. carries. So now you have to wait for a dealership, which you're like I said, you're in the tri-state area, so you're lucky enough right. that there's dealerships all over the place. But if you're in the middle of nowhere in America and this happens, that is a complete and utter nightmare. It, way more than what you're going through right now. I know. Yeah. So, and you just you just nailed it. For if you get a Ford show, which is what I got, yeah, you can't get that. You can't just roll up anywhere and go. I need a tire. Yeah. They have a specific tire that only the dealership can give you. Uh, why is that? Shit is that? That's really stupid. Because they just want your business for every single piece of your fucking car. That's why. But can't they? Can't they uh, wholesale them to like you know? Whoever else would carry your tires? E Rock saying no, because I think this happened. This happened to you as well, E Rock. Yeah, I have a uh, I have a different kind of Ford, but the tire was three hundred dollars, and it's custom built just for that car model. Oh, Christ! So you can't go to like uh, any kind of a tire place or uh, Sam's Club or stuff that has the tire yeah. service center. Yeah, you have to buy the specific tire from a specific brand and have that put in on your car. The, like I barely found a. Uh, a shitty tire to use as a donut that fit on the bolts that yeah. I have. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so you had to search around just to get a <laughs> shitty tire? Yeah. Yeah, the old days, yeah, you got a flat tire, you rolled into a gas station, and they had, hey, we got a bunch of tires on the wall, which one do you want? And and then you were right. on your way. Yeah, they customize everything for these new, for the newer models. But that's not, that's not, like, safe if... If you're not in a in a big city, they don't care. Do you have a donut now or a tire? I, I I got a new tire on that car, but I still have that makeshift one just in the back of my car. I'll be careful. Yeah. Uh, so Brewer, so you just got to sit there and wait for a dealership to open up? Yeah, which is not there's there's one close to me. Yeah. In Mendham. Yeah. Which is in, in Mendham, but uh, I've left two messages. They're not open, so that. This is. So I gotta wait for the. I gotta wait for them to open. So in the meantime, you know, I got my D is going. Jump on a train. I go, hun. <laughs> let, let's say, let's say I jump it. Let's say I get an Uber. Yeah. All right. Yes. That's another. That's another thing. Yeah. That's my cash card. So I have no fucking cash right now. I went to go get cash, and he goes, "It won't take my money out." I go, "What the fuck is going on?" 
my card expired in March, and she's like, oh, I forgot to tell you, I got your new card. So oh. I, said, I got no fucking cash. Oh, that's not good. That's but, a... And then I remember, wait a minute, Uber. Yeah. U U Uber's all credit card. But, all right, so let's say I get an Uber. Okay. I'm in Morristown. I'm in Morristown. Yeah. By the time I get, let's say I get the train in <laughs> 10 minutes, lightning speed Uberman shows up. Yeah. And I, I'm still an hour at right. least of a train to get to there. I go, now, now I'm looking at nine o'clock, maybe arrive in New York City. And by the time I show up, it's like nine thirty. Forget it. Forget it. Uh, that's that's a bad attitude. <laughs> Did she say that to you? Yeah, she's like, "Why don't you, you, you? You're not even giving it a try." Oh, oh, oh. Okay, honey. Yeah. All right, bring the kids to school. Yeah. And I'll, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Uh, let me deal with this. I, I I love your text to me that you're just sitting there like a zero. <laughs> fucking, you don't know what you don't know what to do. Sitting in my car like a fucking zero. I am a zero. I'm staring at some loser right now smoking a cigarette. Yeah. In the back yeah. with with a trench coat. He looks like he's like Armenian or some shit, and he's just like, why did I move to this country? <laughs> well, why did I move? Why do I work at the Hyatt yeah. Motortown? Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. I used to like changing a tire. I felt like a man. Now I, now I, I feel just, I feel like a child. I, I gotta sit here. Yeah. Now sit down and we'll help you. Yeah, you're, you're helping. You have patience. I'm helpless. You're helpless. Uh, helpless. So a lot of people call and they're saying the car with performance package doesn't even have a spare. Uh, no spare so they can keep weight down for gas mileage. That's bullshit. They just want you to be fucking buying the tires from their dealerships so they can make a, a few extra bucks. Or do they want to claim mileage? Is that is, is a caller saying that it's for mileage, or so they can claim a certain gas mileage that, that they purposely said by no weight in the car? Uh, uh, no spare, so they can keep weight down for gas mileage. So maybe, oh. yeah. So maybe they could say, "Look at our car, right? A little, a little more, a little more." For that's your... so. That's so stupid. Because what if you're a fat bastard and you always got some fatty in the back? What's the what's the thing? So it's true. That's very it's, true. Turn weight. Around, Jim. I'm not going to look at you. That's very, very I true. I didn't say anything about you looking for a donut before either. Uh, good, good boy. <laughs> uh, and then someone, Dennis and PA, saying, <clears throat> excuse me, most cars don't have spares anymore. I did not know this. I didn't either. Mine has a, I have like a little uh, donut. It's not a full spare tire. Right. But it gets you 50 or 100 miles or whatever. Yeah. It's pretty solid. Um, you know, I, I, I remember when the cars went to that donut system and I thought that was ridiculous. I'm like, how cheap are you mm -hmm. fuckers that you give us just a tiny little donut tire? Well, you know, Jim, you know how um, uh, the state, what are those no flat tires that don't burst? I have them on my car. So I got, I got a blowout on the LIE one night. Yeah. Uh, it was awful, but I made it back into the city, um, knowing that I was kind of flat because they don't go flat. Yeah. How flat is this tire? Maybe the gas station could just plug it, put a nice little, oh, it, it's, it's as flat as a European chick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, you sound a little happier, so this is a definite. No, I, well, now it's, you know, now it's funny. Now I'm just, I'm looking at this banana, yeah. just debating his life, smoking a cigarette over there, shaking his head to himself. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking at the garbage dump. I'm looking at a... I'm looking at a screen window that's busted off the back of this hotel, mm. and uh, I'm like, eh, I'm all right. Hey, Brewer, I, can... I think we got a guy that works for Ford. He's kind of mad. He's like, I got I to gotta clear some things up, so let me... Uh, yeah, please. I, 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 yeah, please. Tell him to clear it up. I'm putting Bill on the phone with you. Bill in Boston, go ahead. It's Jim Brewer. Hey, hey Jim, how are you? How's that uh, hotel parking lot treating you? It's so good, Billy. How's those well, me... going? <laughs> Let me uh, let me straighten a few things out for you. I don't work for Ford because I have respect for myself. But the reason why they don't put the spare tire in that car, you bought the performance car, so they try to keep weight down, but that's already been cleared up. It's not the gas station's responsibility to have that tire in stock if it only fits one car. It's not just the dealership. You wouldn't stock something you're not going to make money on on a regular basis, right? 
Ching chow, me chow, ching chong chong. This is shit. What are you talking about? <laughs> fucking, you're writing a book about who buys tires for fun. What, what are you talking about, dummy? I, I mean, you have you have your business that you know about. I have mine, right? Oh what, shit! What, what's it got to What's it got to do with a with a flat tire and there's no spare? What does that got to do with anything? Well, I, I thought we cleared that up. You bought you uneducated. In an uneducated way, bought the supposed performance car from Ford, but it has special options and then things that it doesn't have to save on weight to try and make it fast. So you bought something without doing your homework, and that's Ford's fault. Oh fuck! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bill, go go read another fucking book about tires. Hang up, this fucking retard. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask Bill this question: How old are you? I am 29. See, that's the problem. We come from a we come from a time where you had exactly. it. You, 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 if you got a flat tire, you could go anywhere and get another fucking tire within uh, less than an hour. Yeah. Because now there's performance tires I, I and special tires, myself. and it's getting nuts out there. All right, Bill. All right. Thank you. Goodbye, Bill. I, I would Thank actually you, check Bill. for that because I cannot change a tire. I've never changed one, which is really humiliating. And I should learn it because it is a masculine thing, like Brewer said. But uh, I would always check for that, knowing I'm going to need that yeah. if uh, I, there's a problem. I have to be able to have the mechanic do something or, or with a tow truck. I, I'm with Brewer. Every once in a while, it was kind of nice to change a tire. But I bet you most of us wouldn't even be able to do that. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my fingers. <laughs> That's my fear is that I'm going to be changing it and it's going to fall on my hand. I'm going to lose my fingers. The whole car falls? Yeah, like the, the fucking metal part like where the tire comes off is going to yeah. fall and crush my fingers. Do you think most cars even have a jack so you can jack up your car to change a tire? I don't even know. Does my car have no, a jack? You know, I, just, I just, I just, I just checked too. I don't even have a jack. So no, that'd be worse you know if you had a jack. <laughs> it would be worse. <laughs> well, we got a jack and uh, we got the uh, other instrument. Take off the nuts, but there's just no tire. I don't know how to help you. Hey, did you go back did more get... than once and look? Like, did you look and then, <laughs> and then ten minutes later just go back and recheck, like you, people do in the refrigerator when they're hungry and there's nothing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, we, a, yeah, go ahead, Jim. Sorry. I got, I got a dude that's in, clearly listening to the show just pulled up right next to me asked me if I want to ride. Oh, wants to take a ride from a stranger. Yeah, either that or he's just a guy. Who, <laughs> either that or you accidentally pulled into the gay meat spot. <laughs> <laughs> and that he's, he's clearly not listening to the show. Yeah, he has no idea what's going on. Yeah, he has no idea. He just thinks that there's a little meat for sale. Yeah, you'll say do you want to? He'll say you want to ride, then you'll go two blocks and park behind a tree, have his dick out. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Brewer, I say this. You leave the car there, tell D to deal with it, and jump in the jump in that car with a stranger and come to the city and do some radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. I'm calling I'm calling I'm call an hour from now. Wait, wait, we got Jim on the line. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, I I think I think <laughs> I think Boston has a problem with you because there's another guy from Boston that wants in on this. Uh, Josh from Boston, you're on with Jim Brewer. God, who's... was he going to tell me to research more stuff? I right, I get it. I, I, let's see what he's. I think he might be trying to help you. Go ahead, Josh. I'm not going to wait. You can fix this whole situation. Go How? over to okay. go over to town fair and buy four fucking tires so you don't have to buy that specific tire for that car. Oh, strong. Well, he's what saying to buy. What he's saying to buy four tires. This way, when there's a problem, you can buy another tire. You want to buy a specific tire. Right. Well, I don't see how that would work because they then the four tires wouldn't go on the car. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. You get. Yeah, you get rid of the four tires. Get rid of the four tires. You buy four of the same tires. Get right. Get rid of those fucking Ford tires that you can only buy at Ford. Oh. Then you can buy your tires anyway. But uh, can't he just buy one of those tires now and put it on his fucking car? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I got my four. I want one. But you have to make four to open the tire. But why can't you just buy that same size tire? Fuck the brand. Who cares what the brand is? Just go buy that size tire. It doesn't matter the brand. The brand means nothing. Well, it won't fit the car, obviously, or they yeah. would have thought of that. What do you think they're thinking, like, that Jim is brand loyal to Ford? <laughs> right. It won't fit. He don't give a fuck about the Ford tire. He just yeah. wants a tire. Somebody texted he's me. Going, you... He's going by what roadside said. If it, what, Jim, what roadside was it? Was it a Ford roadside? Ford. Ford. Exactly. They're going to tell you, yeah, you've got to buy that tire. 
Mm. Oh, you don't have AAA? You went with Ford Roadside? Yeah. They're going to they're gonna tell you what, what they want wow. to buy. I bet you if you called Town Fair and said, listen, this is the car I got. I yeah. need a tire to fit it. I yeah. bet you they'll have it. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure you have a listener that has been in the situation and knows if I can use a different tire. Well, it's not looking good. I mean, every phone is lit, but they all just want to bust your balls. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> is there a right now? Let's call them up on three-way. Hold on. They're, they're, not, they're not ever run tires, right, Jim? That's what someone's asking me. Those ever runs. You know can, what? Those ever runs that you can get like 100 miles on once they pop? Or oh, no? right, yeah. They're run flat. Run flat. I'm sorry, that's what they're called. Yeah. Run flats. Run flat. Mm. And you know what? That's another thing I thought, I thought of. You know, my father-in-law just just cleaned my car out, and I thought I had fix a flat. I don't know if that works, too, where you just... Sometimes it, fix, uh, it works. How big hole it won't. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I haven't really looked at it hard. It has to be a hole. It has to be a big hole. Hold on a second. Let me see if the two points next year. Hold on. I'm going right. to turn you down so I can hear. All right, Josh, we're going to we're gonna let you go, brother. Thank you. That's a good point by Josh. So maybe it's that you called Ford. Um, I didn't realize that. Mm. Yeah, because this sounds really strange. Right. You could only get a, a that new. That's so funny. Um, He's I in... appreciate it. I'm going to. Uh, my, my wife has to come to Marstown yeah. by 8.30. Yeah. So she drops the kids off, then she's going to come here. Yeah. And we're. Thank you so much. What's your name? Jimmy and Opie. Thank you oh, so much. Oh, Do you want to know Jimmy right now? Yeah, how cool is that? Very cool. Have a good one. Thanks a lot, Dave. Hey, be listening. I may call you back. All right. Bye. Thanks, Dave. So that guy was trying to help you? Yeah, I totally tried to help me. No, he wasn't. That guy has a newspaper over his lap covering his heart on when he realized... <laughs> 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 He's just now trying to cover his own ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I listen to Opie and Jimmy. Sure, yeah, yeah, sure I do. Yeah. Fuck. Jim, that's a good point that guy had. Maybe it literally is just the the, the, the uh, company being brand loyal to themselves. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, I have to find that out. I have triple. How mad will you be if you realize that Ford just gave you that self-serving information so they can make the money off the tire? That that would really piss me off, especially all she had to do is like, well, you can get a different tire or you can um, go to wherever. I I don't, I'm going to say I don't think so. Okay. I, I think it's, well, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to bet you have to get this certain stupid tire because it has these rims too. I don't know. It has these weird, I could be wrong. I don't know. We're trying to order you. Oh, we're trying to yeah, order you a tire right now online, so uh, let's see. Yeah, I never heard of a Ford of a Ford Show. Is that a good car? Yeah. I don't know. Never Mar heard. Oh, Mar I said yes. Oh, well, fuck! Brew does amazing. well for himself, so he should have a nice little car. He should treat himself. Oh, no, it's a it's amazing car. This thing flies. It's so good. Oh boy, it's Someone, a great car. Someone's asking if there's a spare into the car. I guess that guy has tuned in a little late. We got Jim Brewer on the side of the good road. Question with a flat fucking tire. Uh, this guy wants to know, are you in a gay parking lot? We already did that one. Uh, all right, let's go to Jeff on Long Island. Uh, hey. Good morning, Jeff. Say uh, say hi to Jim Brewer, stuck on the side of the road. Hey, Jimmy, how you doing? Sorry to hear about your troubles. That's all right, ma'am. Uh, oh, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, good. No, it makes the day. What are you going to do? Here's, here's the thing. That other guy didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Yes, at times they, they don't give me the spare because of weight and performance. But I'm sitting here in a Malibu, which is not a performance car, and there's no fucking spare. And what they do is it's to save money, right? I could have ordered one for $125, that little piece of shit donut. There you but go. I didn't, and they gave you a pump that plugs into the cigarette lighter that if you get a flat, you could pump it up. So I don't know if there's one of those in the back trunk under the under the mat there. You can check it out. But I'm sure Jim has uh, looked under the mat quite a few times. <laughs> yes. The glove compartment <laughs> under his driver's seat. Maybe they put it under here. It's a special tire. <laughs> Maybe I missed it. Maybe I should go look again. A uh, performance car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got a, uh, a tweet that just came in. DJ Famous Name on Twitter. He uh, he tweeted. Did, did Brewer try to use the flat fix kit the show comes with? Yes. 
Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, this a lot of people are starting to say you you come with a a, right. a flat me, fix kit, and, and, and we're looking at a picture of it. All right, give me 15 seconds. I'm gonna open the trunk and look. Yeah. All right. We, oh. Tell them where it is. It's, it's under the spare tire. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, where's it located in the car? Because this thing looks like it's kind of. Like almost like a secret panel it, to go to find it. It looks like it's under the front passenger seat. Under uh, the front passenger it, seat. All right. Let's okay. Go. Under the front passenger seat. Is yeah, that yeah, does no, say no, locations okay. maybe wait, wait, wait. the model? Yeah. There's a yeah. There is a temporary mobility kit here. Uh huh. Cool. All right. What? All right. What is it? So it's, it's Uber's phone maybe. number. <laughs> <laughs> it looks. <laughs> it looks like a. Uh, um, hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta plug it into. I gotta plug it into the freaking uh, lighter, car. right? In the lighter, and then. Uh, All right. Let's see if this works. Air a little, little air compressor. See this? I'm helping you out. All right. This Thank is, you this very is much, good, sir. Jeff. This is good. Jeff with a J E or G E O, just like, killing time. Not, not like Bob, <laughs> who's like, may I, may I come on the air to prove Jim's a retard? Yeah. Well, you didn't know you had this uh, the mobility kit. So. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the mobility <laughs> kit. You do your research. For the mobility um, kit, you open it. It says sea legs. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do it's a folding, folding bicycle, right? Oh, uh, this is key, Brewer. Uh, do not remove any foreign object that has pierced the tire. And then, because it'll just go flat again. If the hole right. is too big, yeah, it, that, does, that doesn't work. It'll get you about a thousand feet. That's and, nice. And what's I gotta the, look at its feet. And what is the tire sealing compound that it comes with? Mm. Do we know, Eric? Is that a place? It, it comes with some tire sealing compound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got. To, we're hold looking on. at a now YouTube gotta, video how to use this thing. Look. All right, hold on. All right. Okay. Got to make sure the car is on before he does this. Oh, really? Yeah, the car has to be on. The car has to be on, Jim. The power has to be on. Yeah, turn your car back on. Yeah. It is on. It, it, the car is on. Okay. Right. Oh, it runs smooth like oh, a dream. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't see the uh, hole. I may be parked. <laughs> where's, where's the hole? For what? Does he have to... The car. Oh, you mean in the... Uh, I mean on the tire. Well, you got to put a little spit on the tire. Well, well, I don't spit. think you put it into the tire, don't you? Put it, you put it into where the uh, no, 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 no. I know you put it in oh. where the air goes. But yeah. I'm saying, okay. I don't even know. I can't even see where it popped. Gotta use a little yeah. spit just to see it, it bubble up a little bit to see where it's uh, where it's hissing. Yes, Jeff knows. That is me, man. Or you can pour your coffee over your tire. Anything wet. Hold on a second. All right. This is very uh. There's some shit on the back. I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> I swear this is the only thing I want to do today. I just want to talk to Brewer on the phone until you get back on on the road. I want to get Jim straightened out. Yes, we definitely want to get Jim we, Brewer straightened. We want out. to get Jim straightened out. I mean, after <laughs> fucking machine. All right. All right. All right. Now, uh, Make sure you put it, plug it into the tire that has the flat. Person who doesn't know how to help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay, George. Get some color rabbit. Another person <laughs> checking in saying the Ford Tire is a brand loyalty deal. Yes. I bet it is. We Fuck went him. over all this. I, I guess you're just tuning in. What scumbags? Jim Brewer has a flat tire on the side of the road. You have to wait till a dealership opens? And he doesn't have a spare tire, and he has to get a, a new tire from a dealer. Because I'll bet you a what dealership. They, I'll, bet, I'll bet what they do is they probably farm out their main, like to just local uh, shops, right. and the local shops don't carry it. Right. But they could get another tire. They could just go with the local shop. You have to get a Firestone. Well, then the local shops probably have to figure out which tires to keep in stock because I bet you every dealer's doing this horse shit. Well, I bet you know. I bet you Focus won't even call. I mean, Ford won't even call them and let them know. Yeah, you're dealing with Ford directly. They get you the tow truck. Yeah, and the tow truck brings you the tire, but the tow trucks don't carry this tire to specific one. This what fucking scumbag? They want every single fucking dollar. They every want, dollar. What creeps? They want to put the service stations out of business, so they want you to always take your car to the dealership with any problem it has. Well, no, I bet most of their cars, the tires are in the dealerships, but they probably use tires that can go with most of these fucking cars, but this is a special car. So instead of going, yeah, they, it's this tire, 
I bet you this is uh, more a regular thing than not. What creeps? Right. Unless they say too, if you get other tires, Here. that it won't be the computer won't be able to detect the status of the tire. Oh Christ! I want so if the tire is low, the the dashboard won't know because it's not the tire that right. we built. For okay, that but car. fine. But a temporary tire, a donut. Right. Uh, yeah, we need a donut. Uh, do you got? Right. Hey, uh, Brewer. A lot of people are worried that you might have a bent rim. Oh. <laughs> and if you have a bent rim, now you got even more problems. Yeah. Also, we yeah, got a giant explosion. Thing. Yeah. Where are we All at? All right. Let's. Where are you uh, at? I plugged. It. I don't know. I might. Have, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's never good. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Drive it while it's flat. The part of the back fell off. So there's pieces all over. <laughs> Didn't right. Chip love going all over right, the spikes at a party garage? Yeah. Plug in. <laughs> <laughs> Just drive it fucking flat. Mm. Okay, hold on. We'll turn this shit on, I think. All right. Oh, God. Make sure it's face. Make sure it's... Oh. That fuck is loud. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you got it to, to turn the right way or it will suck the remaining air out. <laughs> I got some dummy videotape in this. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Good to know we have a few listeners out there. Jesus, it's like becoming a circus here. Yeah. How are you? You might as well put on a little show. You want to like to, if you have to wait an hour, you want to do a it set. Looks like it's, you, know, you know what it looks like? Yeah. Jimmy's got a field there with this. What does that look like to you? First of all, it's doing nothing. Second of all, yeah. <laughs> It looks like the thing's having a complete orgasm. It's it's gooing all over the side. It's coming out of the sides, this white goo, just dripping down like it's having the best time ever. Wait, it's outside the tire? It ain't doing nothing. So, it's hey, a, that's a big no, hole then, huh? His ass off. It ain't doing nothing. It's just white goo. Coming out of the tire? What do you call it? This guy just tweeted the picture. Yep. <laughs> oh, he did? So what's your Twitter? Wait, what's... I got it. Wait, we, oh, I, oh, just, has it. Hold on, we're going to have it. This guy just tweeted the picture to you. So wait, uh, Jim, you have it plugged in. The stuff's going in the tire. Where is it coming out? It's coming out like where the nozzle is. It's oh. like going out of the side. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe you don't have it hooked up right. If it's coming out the nozzle, maybe it's not going into the tire. Yeah, you got to hook that up. So <laughs> got to make sure that it's really tight. Really tight. You turn to the option to the left. Turn the option to the left, not the right. Yeah, and you got to make sure it's tight. And uh, now pictures are coming in thanks to Twitter. You look, you really do look like a zero. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's tweeting <laughs> pictures of you. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're, you do, they count. You're wearing a gray hoodie and you you look miserable. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a nice car, though, uh, Brewer. Very well, nice car. Yeah, wonderful car when it's working properly. A good parking job. Yeah, this guy's just tweeting pictures of you. What's this? What is? Blow up this guy's Twitter account today. Fuck it, uh, Ruben. <laughs> yeah, Ruben Evan. Ruben, Ruben, Ruben yeah. Evan. I like how he just wait a minute. I like how he just showed up. Doesn't offer a donut or coffee. <laughs> nothing. Like, taking a picture, laughing with his balls off. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. It's Ruben Evan on Twitter. R U B I N E V A N. Ruben. Ruben's going to get some Thanks, followers Ruby. today. Yes. Thanks for the coffee. Hey, bring your coffee? You want us to try no, to find I'm you a tire? Saying, I'm saying, well, the other guy leaves off. <laughs> nah, I didn't do it all night. This is a joke. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is really flat. <laughs> oh, wait, Jim. What, what happened when you put the thing in? Yeah. Uh, it was fine. It, ro it, it screwed all the way in. And then, um, I'll try it one more time. It screws all the way in. Yeah, make sure it's tight. But... Make sure it's tight. Yeah, get it in there nice and snug. Yeah, get it in there snug. That's a pretty cool car. Mm -hmm. Maybe another. Maybe we'll get another guy to come over here and take some more pictures. Sure. All right. I, I got some more phone calls for you, too. That was pretty funny. He looked like a goofy. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a special performance tire. <laughs> that was tire, kind of but... funny. So all he did was just take a picture. It was fucking hilarious. No, is that this is like a sports car? It doesn't. It looks like a, a nice sedan, like a Mercedes. Looks like a nice performance no, car. The, the, it's it's like considered their sports car. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, look, <coughs> I, I got somebody on the phone that's going to help you out. David in Minnesota. Go ahead, David. Hey, how you guys doing this morning? Hi, Dave. Uh, we're good. We're, Jim we're, is we're not really, so much. Yeah, exactly. Who are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> Stop with the mobility kit. You drove on the tire too long, it's going to have sidewall damage. It'll never work. 
Oh, shit. You okay. hearing this? Well, how long yeah. should he have driven on it? So he just pulled off the exit. What do you want him to do? Stop in the middle of the highway? Yeah, he had to, he had to get the car off the, uh, the fucking highway. No, absolutely he did. But that causes damage to the tire that you can't repair and the kit will not work with. Mm. Well, how does the God. kit work? If what? If, if like, when does the kit work? If you if you plug it in while you're still going? How, how does it happen? <laughs> right. <laughs> this kit no, sucks. Not exactly. the, kit, the kit is designed to take care of punctures that are between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. It doesn't take care of significant damage to the tire. Okay. So you hit a nail and don't know it, and then there's a slow leak overnight. You plug it in, it will get you to the dealer. Mm. Exactly. Right. Well, you can buy another right. Ford tire. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, this shit is all thick. It's not a Ford tire. Ford does not make tires. I know. It's just... All right. But sorry. They, they, part, they exactly. partner with a company that gives them a good deal on the price. Unfortunately, they're, they're partnering with lesser-known brands. Oh, those assholes. Oh, fucking idiots. You could have been, Jim, you could have been on your way already if they would have just done the right thing. If you had right. AAA, they would have changed out that tire, and you'd have been zipping on into the Big Apple. That's right. <laughs> or if you had an old-school spare tire and a jack. Yes. God, I feel like a man. Yes. I love that. Just clink, clink, clink. I'm changing my tire. When you can get that bolt loose, where it takes a little while, and then you fucking muscle it, and you finally get it loose, that's a good feeling. A wonderful Dude, I used feeling. To rotate my tires just to show off my my what you, I thought were guns when did, I was like eighteen. Did you really? Who the fuck rotates yeah, their own right. tires, you weirdo? When I have a flat, I literally just lift up my pant leg and show my calf and, and hope that a, a trucker pulls over. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, now they're saying the tire popped the bead, whatever that is, from the rim. You need a shop. Uh, another guy saying, "I've got the same tire. I'll bring in my spare for five hundred dollars." Oof! What, what? What? Unless this guy paid five hundred for it. Uh, probably got to have the tire shipped to the dealership. This other guy yeah, saying. Other guy saying. No, they'll have it in the dealership. No, they'll have it in the dealership. Oh, I won't. Oh, I won't. Hey, now there's a big I echo. A, I wish I could do a three-way. I wonder if I could do a three-way call because. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. The um, other place hasn't. They haven't called me yet. And usually the dealership calls me. <clears throat> I've known them for like 17 years, so. Yeah, wow. Yeah. You're a Ford guy. You're a Ford guy. You know what? Um, I've had Ford for like over 20 years, but I don't know if it's, uh, yeah. I, I won't say like that's all I buy and I will never buy another car. I think a lot of it is convenience. Sure. Convenience, really. Convenience, really. Sounds it's, real it's convenient, convenient, convenient right now. Convenient right now. Exactly. And I mean, like getting a car. I, I hate looking for cars. I hate, um, you know, where I moved. It's literally four miles from my house. Yeah. There's other dealerships there and all that jazz. But this guy was always good. And all right, we got a tire pro. Well, got a tire pro. I'm going to take one more call from a tire pro. It's Dustin in Wisconsin. Dustin in Wisconsin. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, guys, how's it going? Well, Dustin, we say it well, once. Dustin, we say it once. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. All right, Jimmy. Do you have 20s or do you have a 19? First, uh, I go. How big, Jim? Yeah. What, do I have a what? <laughs> 20 or a 19? Yeah. Yeah. 20s or 19? I have no clue what that means. <laughs> okay, well, the Taurus, the Ford Taurus show either comes in a 20-inch rim or a 19-inch rim. Yeah, I need to know that. Other than that, the tire size is a 245-45. That's all you need. You don't need a specific tire. You just need that size. Okay. Well, where's it going to get that? You get a ruler, Jim? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the, size of your tire, the size of your tire is printed on the side of your tire. Well, <laughs> on the side of the tire? Yeah. It's on the side of your tire. We'll tell you exactly what size it is. Yeah, let's find out if you have a 19 or a 20. That That's going to help the situation. You'll be on your way in minutes after you find out if you got a 19 or a 20. I'm not saying it's going to help you go right now. I'm just saying it's going to help you drive. <laughs> well, he needs help right now. Yeah. He, need, he well, needs a damn yeah. tow truck. Yeah, you blew out your tire. What are you going to do? you got to tow it. But when you buy a tire, that's the size you need. Our pal Jim Brewer needs a cup of coffee and a goddamn tow truck. It said 220 tire. I agree. And all that. 220. All right, so you need a 245-45R20. Got a oh, pen, Jimmy? Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Brewers had it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this was fun for about 20 minutes. Now you've just had it. Now you've just had it. Uh, wow. You... I get it. I, I get it. I just, at the end of the day, I still got to get someone to come here. I still got to go get it. And yeah. All that jazz. Uh, so good. <laughs> I, I read the uh, I read the Rolling Stones article, Rolling Stone article that you sent me yesterday, man. Congratulations! That's what you were going to promote much. today is your your big album that's coming out. Yes, and it's not for gosh at least another month. Right. Yeah, they. Re I was. Um, yeah, they released that. So the going to be a dick tonight, which is I didn't think that'd be the first one, but. So it still works. It's funny. Gets the message that this is going to be a a cool album. Right. Well, I mean the headline. The headline. The uh, this is the title of the article. Uh, if you go to RollingStone dot com, Jim Brewer's Preps debut heavy metal album, Songs from the Garage, and then it says here comedians hilarious heavy first song. Hilarious. Be yes, that's what the what what Rolling Stone is uh, Rolling Stone is saying. Here comedians hilarious heavy first song. Be a dick tonight. Do we have a copy of that yet? We should play that. To, I don't know. Not with that language in it. <laughs> we need the clean version. But they're uh, they're all about it. Rolling Stone is saying this thing is pretty damn good, Jim. I, hey, listen. I I'm excited about it. I I'll tell you this. You, you know, I've been trying to take a whack at this forever. Yeah. But but not until I met Rob Caggiano and this guy. I understand a producer now. A producer is like the greatest director in the world. Now, it, it, a producer is really what makes the music. I mean, this is, mm. this would be, this would be a fucking disaster, full blown disaster if I didn't have this producer. This guy, he does all guitars and just, he drove me fucking bonkers, but now I get it. Now I get it. He'd sit me by a piano. You think this is a pain in my balls? He'd sit me by a piano on, on with two lines going, you're singing this. Bing, bang, bang. I need you to go, bing, bang, bang, bang. What, what, what the fuck are we doing right here? He's <laughs> yeah. playing piano. Wait, I'm a comedian. Right? He's like, no, trust me. You got it. You can hit this note. You got to sing it this way. This guy, I, I would clash we clash heads, but every time the product was finished, I was blown out of my mind. I, just, I was ready to buy my leather pants. No leather kidding. pants and kangaroo. Right. Okay. But, but, but the, also, it, it's, it, I, I, I have to, uh, everything I wanted to do with this project, it happened. Meaning, I don't, I don't want it to look like, hey, I'm coming out. I just want to look like, I'm just having fun. I'm just living life. I'm living the fucking dream. And at the end of the day, I think on stage, I'm going to be wearing gym shorts, uh, a T-shirt, and a fucking jacket the way I do it in my garage when I'm home alone. And yes. That's the, whole, that's the whole concept of the album is when nobody's home, this is what goes on. Yes. And, that, and literally when we go in concert, I'm going to have videos of waking up, uh, my wife's leaving messages, and then I walk into the the, the set's going to be a three car garage. Nice. And I we have an hour and a half to pull this off before they come home. Wow, oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Uh, you're not really living the dream right now, though, Mister Brewer. You're uh... no, I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm living kinda... the, I'm living the zero right now. You're living uh, the what zero. A loser. <laughs> what a loser! All right, listen. Let I want. Me Good. What? I want to play the song "Be a Dick" tonight. I think it's online, right? right? You got it, uh, E Rock. Let's play "Be a, uh, a Dick" tonight off Jim Brewer's new album that's coming out in uh, May. And uh, this we're gonna. Is, uh, this is a thing, yeah. man. There's only three that are funny, and this is like one of them. The rest are, the rest are not directly in your face funny. This one's clearly trying to be funny. Okay. Let's check it out and we're gonna uh, we're gonna check in with you to make sure you're all right there in that parking lot down there in Jersey. All right. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks. Should I hold what am I doing? Am I hanging out? What am I doing? Um
we'll we'll call you in after the break and all that. So like fifteen twenty minutes, and we're gonna we'll get an update on Jim Brewer as he sits on the side of the road, or actually in a parking lot now with a fucking flat tire, and he can't replace the tire anytime soon until the dealer opens up. That is ridiculous. I'm going to call the dealer now while we're doing it. Yeah, do all that, and then we'll get an update after the break. Jim, how far are you from home? Just curious. How, like, how, uh, 10 miles or less? No, no, no. I'm uh, probably about 20, 25 miles, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, something like that. All right, Brewer. Thanks, buddy. We'll check in with you in a little bit. All right. Thank you. All right. In the meantime, it's Jim Brewer, be a dick tonight. We will be back. Yes, we're back. Good morning, everybody. Everybody. Jamie Jasta, what's up, buddy? Yeah, what's up? We've been trying to connect for a while now. We finally, we finally did it again. Yeah. Nice. Made it in. You made it in. Where were you? I was everywhere. We were doing a record. Yeah. Yeah. We we finished the record back in. Uh, January. Nice. Now I've been doing press, promo, radio. Nice. City all day yesterday. Are you going to be hitting the road? Yeah, May 13th it starts in Cleveland. And then what happens? Like how many dates? Are you doing the whole country, the whole world? Where are we at? The whole country. Nice. And uh, it's looking, it's us, Devil Driver, Devil You Know, Act of Defiance is on some dates. It's looking pretty good right now. If it, if it keeps selling the way it's selling, we'll be able to add a whole another leg. Nice. Are, are you ready for the tour? I don't know. I got to leave April 20th for Europe, too. And, you know, there, were a couple, there was a show in Belgium that was, you know, they were saying might be up in the air because it's a huge festival. They need to, like, up the security. But they just said that that's going to happen. And Are you scared to go to Belgium? No. Nah, everything going on? Nah, I think it'll be all right. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, all that type of stuff comes up. And then you're just waiting. You know, Mariah Carey bailed. All the mainstream artists bailed. Everybody's canceled their shows. In Belgium? Yeah. They said, fuck that. Yeah, like, but then all the metal bands, like Prong had a show that night. They played. Uh, would, all the metal bands are toughing it out. And the shows are great, and people are really appreciative. I would assume, uh, because of what happened in Belgium, unfortunately, it makes it a, a safer place uh, right now. Maybe not as we move forward uh, over the next few months or whatever, but right now the, it's the safest place in the world because they really want to make sure that the, that shit doesn't happen again. I think so, and yeah, and, and look at Paris. You know, I mean, there was a lot of bands canceled Paris right after that, and a lot of bands kept their shows in. I mean, there's now America's so oversaturated with tours because everybody's scrambling to book tours in the States. Oh. Because, you know, whatever yeah. safety concerns. But I don't think it's that much of a concern. Right. Well, what happened to the, Orla sorry, what happened to the Orlando Music Festival? I was supposed to perform there and they just canceled it. So, like they're moving into September or something? Really? You know, no, I mean, you don't know what weren't sure. Was, it was that more of like with a classic. Kiss and Def Leppard? Yeah, yeah, it was a classic rock fest. Yeah, that. I, yeah, I don't know what happened with that. Maybe someone got sick or something. Or maybe, I don't know. There's something to do with t there's some kind of ticket online problem. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe. They've got to work some shit out. We, we are doing Rocklahoma, and are you going to do River City Rock Fest? And I, I haven't been asked to do it, but if they say, would you, you like should. to do it? Scorps. Here's some money. Scorps are headlining both. Yeah, I, I would do any festival. The fucking, the ISIS lop their heads off festival with headliner <laughs> Jim Norton. I'll be there with bells on. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> All right, we got Jamie Jaston from Hate Breed in the studio, but uh, we got to get an update from Brewer. I don't know if you were listening, but Brewer was supposed to be here today. I, I thought it would be a nice match, you and yeah. Brewer. And uh, Brewer was on his way in, and he hit a pothole, and uh, he got a flat, and then he's got like a high-performance Ford, and you can only get the, the, the tire from a dealership. You can't just go to a gas station like the old days. He doesn't have a spare tire. He doesn't have a donut. Uh, the, the fix kit didn't work. I'm just updating everyone in, in case they're starting to listen right now. And uh, he, has to, he has to wait for the dealership to open up so they could give him a new tire. That's All ridiculous. Right. So uh, we go back to Jim Brewer for a minute or two here. Uh, Brewer, I'm good. He was up. Uh, Jamie, what's up? You know, you, of course, you know Jamie Jasta. Can you, Jim? Can, can you hear him? I, we I almost can't wait. yeah. I we I did his podcast. We almost did nine hours. We probably yeah. could still be talking. <laughs> we went deep in the rabbit hole. People are still tweeting me about that episode. They're like, "You that was great." We were talking about you know how deep did you guys go? Oh, we were going UFOs. Oh, we <laughs> Oh, nice! <laughs> we were going astral traveling. We were nice. Yeah, good orbs. for you guys. Were you guys a little uh, under the influence? No, no. no. As a matter no. of fact, as a matter of fact, I called him driving into New York City. I literally called, I think, from my house, and we. St I stayed on the line all the way into Manhattan. I literally had to go because I was about to 
park in my garage. I think it was like an hour 15 straight. Brewer, I got to tell you something. I, I've known you forever. You're one of the few guys that could do a really good phoner. Doing a phoner is really, really tough. Very hard. Uh, you do a, a very good phoner. Bre uh, Brewer. Bill Burr. Uh, Bill Burr, I meant to say. And, I mean, it's a very short list. Of dice. That. There's a few guys dice that are great on the phone. It. Usually it's Dice in a bathroom somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Jay Moore. <laughs> oh, Jay Moore is on that list. But uh, it's yeah. not It's not easy, and especially to do it for a really long time, like just driving all the way into Manhattan. Oh, yeah. And you know what? I thought about you this morning, Jim, because randomly I woke up and I was thinking about this time. I, we went to this, like, opening of a casino. I took my daughter and she cut the cake. They did like a this awesome lion cake for the MGM and she got to cut the first piece. And then when I walked into Sirius, the guy who made the cake is right out there sitting duff like Charm City Cakes, right? Yeah. yeah. He's here. Talk about that was like a Jim Brewer uh, mm. experience where Nice. What do you call that? Synchronicity? Synchronicity. Good song by the police. What's that guy doing out there besides <laughs> avoiding Roland? <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta tell you guys something. I, yeah. That is sick, but people keep driving up here. Yeah. Okay, and now I've got this awesome lady bringing me coffee and freaking donuts. This is awesome. Oh, good. Oh, so good. This is so, you know what? I'm gonna pretend I'm broke down every day just so I can eat. Yeah, people are tweeting me that they'll bring you here, and they'll bring you a spare tire or whatever you need. Well, see, here's the problem. Uh, Brewer uh, laid it out perfectly. If you don't hit the road at a specific time, it's almost impossible to get into Manhattan without yeah. you know dealing with at least a couple hours of traffic. So he's fucked as far as his show goes. Hey, uh, Brewer, we played the... Uh, I forgot the name of the song. Don't be a dick tonight. Uh, what? Wait, hold on a second. I'm taking, yeah. I'm taking a picture with Patty who brought me some stuff here. Oh, wow. You got your camera? <laughs> you got your camera. She's unprepared. This is why people don't take pictures. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Uh, you can't take a ride from a stranger anyway. Because yeah. they'll fucking babble the whole time and want your number. Uh, yeah, yeah. How do you how do you get around giving the number out? I just don't do it. Okay. Like to my friends, I, I just shut it down. I never, they don't usually ask me. Mm. Oh really? Yeah. Well, would, people don't usually ask you your number. Okay. Just email. I an email. I don't check my phone. Brewer, you back? Okay. What a pleasure. Give me a hug. Oh, okay. Give me a hug. We're not both oh, being you, Brewer. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Hey, I'm gonna press my fucking <laughs> right. my half hard dick oh, on your thigh <laughs> for your good deed. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Good for you, buddy. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the munchkins. Can I press my heart on against your hip? Push, pushing your helmet on the on, on her thigh right now. Nice. For, good for you, Brewer. <laughs> Got to get something out of this damn fucking morning. I, uh, uh, Brewer, we played Be a Dick tonight. You probably heard it. Holy fuck, that was good. Yeah, good job, man. You liked it? Yes! The production on awesome. it was ridiculous. There's jokes in there. It was funny. I liked it a lot. Well, I gotta be honest with you. It was a pain in the balls to do it under a time limit and and get that. That was totally. We kept improving, and then I would say something really funny, like, "Dude, it was too long. You didn't. You got to You got to do it in thirteen seconds. Like, thirteen fucking seconds. Jesus. <laughs> but. Anyway, thank you. That's fucking awesome. they, they were cracking a whip in that uh, studio with you, but it, it came out great. It really did. And uh, there's a link. I'll, I'll tweet it out. I think our show account tweeted it out already. But if you go to metalblade.com slash songs from the garage, you can pre-order Brewers. Uh, I guess we still call them albums, even though we, whatever. Uh, do yeah, we call them albums? Yeah. Downloads? Whatever the fuck. But it's uh, metalblade.com slash songs from the garage. Please pre-order Brewers, Brewers album. It's going to do well. And Jamie, I can't wait to see you live, man. You're touring now, right? Aren't you going on tour? We're like Devil, Devil Driver and band, Devil, right? you know. Yes. Fuck okay. yeah. Devil going on. Now. Yeah, come to the Starland June fourth, or we're doing Rocklahoma and River City Rock Fest. You got to get on some of these shows. It probably will. You right? should. I mean, yeah. the, anytime they there's, do the comedy stages, it, it rips. I mean, people love it. It's a good. There's a huh? there's a lot of crossover with Florentine does them, Norton yeah. does them. I yes. Mean, you got to do them, Jim. Jim I, I, I've done a couple, but I, I think no, Jim, you you haven't done these yet. Have you? Done I've these? did Rock on the Range, and I've done a couple here and there, but not many. Um, you know, I, I would do them. Mm. I mean, you know, you know, people know that I'm a fucking prostitute. I'll tap dance anywhere <laughs> and anywhere they want me to go. But yeah, no, I, I like music festivals. Uh, Bonnaroo, I've done a few times. 
They set them up well with a comedy tent is excellent, and the crowds are always great because they know what they're going in that tent for. Right, right. Well, but I think you should do I'm, them with a full I'm band. Looking. He probably will. If you did them with a full band, that <laughs> you you would slay. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think you'll. I bet you you see Brew on some of these shows. Uh, Brew is going to come in soon and do a couple of these songs off his album. Uh, Brew. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll go. I'll see you in Chicago. I'll the Chicago open air. But Jamie, I'm going to come see you in June. I'll text you. I want to. I want to. If I can come say hello, that'd be awesome. Yeah, you, we got to do part Starland. two. Yep, June fourth at Starland. We got to do part two for the podcast. People have been asking me. Right. We got to do it in person. All right, let's, and, let's plan on that, man. I'll see you then. Safe travel. All right, brother. And, you too. And, and Brewer, what's up with the tire? You good? Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, the the dealer's open. Okay. And. And uh, what do you call it? And um, the guy's on the way. I just got the text. All you right. need anything else? And we'll send some crawlers over there, exactly. some eclairs. What do you need, buddy? What do you oh, need? That lady, that lady came. She was, She looked great. She was smoking. <laughs> nice. She worked at she, get, she handed me her little coffee. And, right. and I got a, a blueberry muffin. And <laughs> nice. She looked raw. Oh my God, my morning turned out great. Now this is good. I'm talking to Jamie and you guys. Yeah, it worked out good. okay for you. Song. All is good. Thanks for having me, man. All right, bro. We'll see you soon. But for the people, metalblade.com slash songs from the garage to pre-order Jim Brewer's uh, album, heavy metal album, and not all of them are, forget, are are comedy bro. songs. No, and don't forget, Brian Johnson's on one of them with me. Yes, guest spot, and it, that's it's, the biggest guest spot you can land, right? Absolutely, especially with all that's the like new Mick Jagger or well, the Beebs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you were probably the reason why his uh, his ears got blown out. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked it. I fucked it all up. But at least I got a song out of it. Yeah. Uh, and is it true, Axel Rose? It's it's sounding more like he's going to do some of those ACDC dates. No, I don't think so. I'm going to say yes. You know, Jamie? No, no, I don't know anything. <laughs> but I'm going to say that I think. It's I don't bad. know. He was he was kind of uh, practicing with them a little bit, and uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say. I'd like to see if, if someone had to do it. Mm -hmm. I I can only see someone like David Grohl. Really? I, I, me personally, yeah. as an ACDC oh, fan, nice. and David Grohl is just a great rock and roll legend guy, and he's the type of guy that would he he would bring it. There's no ego. There's no nothing, and he's the type of guy like, hey, listen, this is for Brian, and this is for. Like, it's not about him. It, it would be like that. That's the only. I think for now, as a as a bystander, I think that's the only one I would go. All right, I I can see that. Yeah. That I can see. Are, I, I I can't see. Are that. they doing more than one singer, or, or I heard they might do it like part like oh guest spots, guest spots during either different shows or different like maybe Grohl does one or two or part of it, or Axel does mm -hmm. a couple. Well, Axel showed up within the hour of the start time at the Troubadour show. So imagine if Axel checks the ego at the door. Angus and them says, look, this is how it is. We're not getting you the roast lamb. We're not, you know, you're going in. We're playing. We're not paying all these union fees, overages. We're playing at this time every night. If you could do that, then that would be wild. That would be it's, pretty amazing. I don't say. think he would do that with ACDC. I know he loves them. You hope That's that his he favorite would, band ever, right? Yeah, you hope that he, he doesn't want to fuck that up. He's got to show respect. A little respect. I'm gonna say no way. I'm gonna say no way he can pull that off. No well, way. Well, my bet. Obviously, I, I had a lot of money on Merle Haggard, but we saw how that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like Brewer knows a little something, something here. I'm hearing a little. Uh, I'll tell you what he doesn't know. In your voice. What he doesn't know is what's in his trunk. Yeah, that's, that's what for he sure. Know. He knows a lot about heavy metal, but he doesn't know how to fix a fucking tire. Uh, and and did ACDC kick? Uh, hey, did did ACDC hey, wait, kick wait, wait. Brian Johnson out of the band? I have no clue. Dude, I get these two crazy looking rugs Jim, to come up. Please. Uh, you, I honestly have no clue. Okay. Were, were you like a victim of clickbait with that whole thing? Because I felt bad for you. Like, they kind of. I mean, I, I didn't think you shared too much. It it, it seemed very no. innocent. But then all of a sudden, it, it was, was like. Everybody you, you went literally with it. made like yeah. worldwide headlines. Yeah, you did. I didn't expect that at all. It, it, was, it was a very intimate conversation. And uh, the only the only thing I'm guilty of was putting Brian in a spot. And 
that I still feel very, very shitty about. And um, that's the only thing. It was like... Is he mad at you? Know, you? Head. No, he wasn't mad. He was just, you know, picture him just waking up. His, his, <laughs> this was his words, right? He goes, um, now you got to understand something. I, I just went on vacation. I, I, I toured my balls off. And I just flew down to Turks and Caicos to meet the family. Ooh. So it's, I had two wines, had the phone call, and the way that process goes, too, is the, the podcast doesn't come out for like a week or two later. You have the one guy edits it, then he gives it to Lou, uh, another guy, and he puts on the bells and whistles, and then he ed edits it and he goes, is this cool? And then, and then it's up. Yeah. And I had this conver I had this conversation late at night, a couple of wines. I wake up in the fucking morning with and, and Dee's waking me up like, Oh, we're gonna go paddle boarding and <laughs> out and the kids wanna rent boards. How about we go snorkeling? Like, yeah, it's And I I didn't even roll out of bed and I checked and there's about forty messages radio shows. And like, what the fuck? One guy, our podcast is number one. What? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, and then I, and then I see, um, Brian, Brian and his wife called. And I'm going, oh, Jesus, what the hell is going on? And then I, I saw someone sent me a link and then all I did was press the link and I saw the headline. And the headline says, Jim Brewer says, Brian Johnson feels like kick to the curb. And I, I just sat numb for about 10 minutes before I did anything. And uh -huh. I, and I, and so I, I called up Brian. Yeah. And, um, he goes, um, it was Jimmy's son. I, I, I just, I, I got this weird call from a friend <laughs> in England. And soon as he said, I got a call from my friend in England. I went, holy shit. <laughs> my holy podcast shit. is popular. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, and he said, and it doesn't sound like you. It, 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 he said that Jim Brewer said I was fired. I went, uh, now I'm trying to think of fucking everything. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Holy shit. Last night. Jesus Christ. That was, how long is this? How long has this thing been fucking up? It couldn't have been up more than, uh, I go, um, Brian, I, a hundred percent did not say you were fired. hundred percent. I, I, I definitely did not say that. I, I might have, I might have vented how I feel, but I, I, he goes, no, it doesn't sound like you would actually say something like that, me son. I go, no, no, no. He goes, just just make sure you don't say that I coded things. I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course not. Yeah. Because <laughs> no. then the headlines started to change throughout yeah. the day. Jim Brewer confirms Brian Johnson's yeah. firing from the group. And like, it, it really wow. started to get crazy. And then the podcast, uh, podcast <laughs> continues to get popular. It's a tough spot, right, Mr. Brewer. And then I took that shit down. I'm like, take it off. <laughs> right, make it go away. <laughs> make it go away. Yeah. Um, and then I saw this, which is absolutely, um, hold on a second. I'm going to send you a link here. Okay. And, and this one is really bizarre. And I don't know why. I don't know why it came out. It did, there's some other ones. There was another here. Close source close to ACDC confirms singer Brian Johnson was fired. It's on United Media Publishing. And this says, and I don't know who this is, but it said, I can send this to you. Yeah, please says, do. Um, um, a source close to ACDC has confirmed comedian Jim Brewer's recent allegation, later retracted, that the band have parted ways, he fucking quotes me, kicked at a curb, yeah. with longtime singer Brian Johnson under dubious 
circumstances. And then the guy quotes everything Mr. Brewer originally said is basically the truth in a roundabout way. <laughs> and then he goes and then he goes on to say that he calls him Jonas. Yeah. Jonas. So I don't know who this guy is. Jonas a fab guy and has been treated like shit. He does have hearing issues, but not as serious as they're saying. This was just an excuse to fire the guy, basically. Um, and then it goes on. The plan is to decide on a singer within the next couple weeks, reschedule, and then go back in the studio. And he goes on to say, like, ACDC, Angus Young is making ACDC like a kiss. Like, it's more of just a machine and an entity. So I don't know who this guy is, but he he jumped on my boat going, whoa, 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 whoa. So who's left in ACDC? Because Phil Rudd's out, right? He's had legal issues. Oh, just boy, Angus. did he have some issues. Just, just Angus. Okay. Yeah, it says it's no longer a band, just to reiterate, uh, no longer a band anymore, but a brand similar to Kiss, I suppose, which is a bit nauseating, honestly. And this all happened in, like, the last two years, like, like or, or with uh, the, the one illness. Who is, who is it that got Angus's brother, yeah. dementia? Brian Johnson having Malcolm. health issues? What? Yeah, Malcolm health issues, Brian health issues, and then fucking Phil Rudd legal issues. That's just Angus. So you can replace these guys yeah. with young, energetic, uh, talented rock stars and, and keep the brand going. Everybody started putting their name in the mix. Like people, Interesting. Were, I, people were like, it, it was kind of cheesy. Like people were, dudes were coming out like, I'll do it, I'll do it. Like everybody was seeing the uh, pie in the sky. But you know, you know who would have been how a great look? fill in is Mark Tornillo from. He's used to be. I think he was in TT Quick, and then he he joined Accept. I don't know. And they actually headlined. Wham. Accept actually headlined a, a show. ACDC had to cancel in Romania, and it was a big deal because they thought the entire crowd was going to leave. Like you're you're replacing ACDC with Accept, yeah. and the whole crowd stayed. And Accept ripped it like balls to the wall. All the songs like fast I mean, as a shot. Yeah. Chad Norton knows he's he's down with accept. Mm -hmm. You would remember balls to the wall. I know that song yeah. for real. I do, but uh, that's as far as I go. So Brewer, you're here to say that uh, it's all bullshit on your part. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> what is that? Christ, hold on. What is that now? What the fuck is happening here? <laughs> oh, I don't know. He's getting busy. Yeah, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but that guy Mark, on, he, he, he would care Brian's going. parts. Yeah. Now your battery's going? I th I th you there? I yeah, we're here. Hey, I hold on, hold on. I thought it was Brian Johnson on the bat phone. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, hold on. You what are you doing? Up, yeah. We told you to stop. Right there. Right. Yeah, we're here. Jim, turn your car off. You're not making it any better. I wish I could do the <laughs> accent. <laughs> How annoying is that? Now my battery's going to die. Turn the radio uh, down. Oh, gosh. You've been in, you've nah, been in nah, that parking lot for like two, uh, I don't know, at least two hours. Yeah. The dealership's know, open. Where are they, Jim? Yeah. <laughs> they're coming, they're coming. <laughs> they're coming, they're oh coming. Oh, my God. Please turn ignition off or start engine. Oh, great. This is great. Now, now you're going to need a battery. Started. Yeah, you just turn it off. Just give it a little start, Jim. Let the old, uh, let, her, let her run for a second. Yeah, let the battery uh, get all healthy. Uh, Don't be a goose. There we go. You're good. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Um, so, are you, I guess we got to wait for Brewer. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Jim Brewer. Uh, now the phone died. I don't know. Okay, okay listen. So so you're here to deny all that bullshit with the ACDC and the Brian Johnson? No, I'm here. I don't. What am I denying? I'm just saying, um, I don't know. What are you asking me? What, what am I denying? You got put in a, you got you got put in a bad position. Yeah, yeah. Because you shared a personal conversation that you thought it wasn't going to be a big deal. You you, you just thought, hey, you know. Okay, is, right. And then of uh, then it ran like wildfire. Yeah. It got out yeah. of control. So the story's yeah. true, but you weren't supposed to be the one to put it out there. Uh, I, I I'm not. I, listen. <laughs> 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 I'll say this. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty on the noggin. But um, I just, yes, Jamie, it was, it was. I didn't expect that, and it was a very personal conversation. And I think people took and ran with it again for Brian to be put in that situation without even, just, you know, he just fucking wakes up. Well, you know, I guess I'll wake up and. <laughs> And and all of a sudden, he's in that position. That's shitty. 
Yeah. That, that's very shitty. And yeah. for a, yeah. for a friend of mine, I still I, I write I I, I got to be honest with you. It's one of the most horrible things that I think of. I it, it's I'm still uh, I'm still fucked up over it, and I feel. And I, you know, his wife is still, you're fine. And he says, it's all good. And don't worry. Trust me. You didn't, you just, you were just being, uh, you just saw me in a soft spot. I saw him. He was depressed. It was, it fucked me up. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and I just didn't know. I'm like, what do you mean? You know, what do you, what do you mean people don't talk every day? You know, I forget, you forget bands or businesses. You know, we, we as a fan, it's almost like a ball player. You go, what do you mean you didn't know you were traded? How do you fucking not know? So, as a, as a fan, hearing things, and he wasn't even, you know, there was another guy there, and, um, you know, it was, it was, he didn't say those things. It was me Assuming. elaborating. All right? Is that, is, that, I, is that good enough? I, I hear... <laughs> No, I hear you loud and clear. I, I hear this. You were sticking up for a very good friend of yours. You were a little, a little pissed off at maybe some of the things you were yeah. hearing, and then you were like, well, i got to stick up for this guy. I love this guy. He's been great to me over the years. That's what I kind of hear through this conversation. Well, let's just say Brian is a great man. Mm -hmm. He's the funniest bastard I know, and he is a legend of rock. He's still, he's still in great shape. His voice sounds great. Uh, he's like 70 and in better shape than most rockers. That I love him. I love Brian Johnson. He, we had him. We were lucky enough to have him in here once. He was just ridiculously good. On the yeah. Video. And the fact they fired him is really well, sad. Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Here's, here's the weird thing of it, too. And, I, and I'm like, oh, man. I already got like one. Out of everyone, there's only one tweet. That I read that I, I was waiting for this. The fact the song that he sings with me literally sounds like we just wrote it last week just to go fuck you. Oh Everyone. no! Oh, oh so yeah. it's topically I, relevant oh, to the no. situation <laughs> without is, knowing it was correct. He basically the song is about you may call me an old man and push me to the side, but guess what? I still tear it up. I'm still Mr. Rock and Roll. And the, wow, and the wow. lyrics, it, it is so, and I'm sitting there going, oh, my God. People are going to go, oh, so the whole thing was a fucking goof. And the two of them conjured this so they mm. can get people to, but it's, you know, it was a year ago. It was over a fucking year ago. So, Bro, um, it, was last, it was last July. I, yeah. I hear you once again loud and clear, and basically you want people to think that you had no idea before you recorded that song with Brian Johnson. Yeah. What? <laughs> I didn't have a fucking idea. I didn't have a fucking idea. I didn't have a fucking idea. Of course you did. That, that I could firmly say. Yeah. There was no fucking... I didn't see that coming right. 10,000 miles away. And right. you got all the clearances to release that song, right? Like, they signed off. Yeah, it's not they. It's just Brian. Okay. And I asked, I said, Brian, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Said, yeah, absolutely, my son. And this is the thing he told me. He too. calls you his he's son? Like, I, he always does. He goes, my son, my son. He calls me my son. Give me my son. He goes, um, I go, Brian, I want you to listen to the song. So we can, you know, I want you to be happy with it. And he goes, Jimmy, my son, I trust you. And then, so after he said something like that, and then that, you know, uh, and then that fucking uh, news came out. That's what I was like, Jesus Christ. This guy, this guy puts his trust into me. And now he's got his friend from England calling him going, hey, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the headlines, bro. Oh, it's a little bit, uh. It's a bit concerning, but he already knew, you know, the headlines were already, they're looking for a new singer. Sure. And they already were. Sure. So he still hasn't made, you know, whatever that it'll all pan out. It'll all come out. Brewer, I know you're in a tough spot, but I think you did your friend a, a solid in the end. When it's all said and done, I think you did him a solid. I, I know it's weird how it all came out, but right. I think uh, I think the world needs to know what happened to Brian Johnson. If you know what I'm saying, and and you're gonna, get I would like to, uh, yeah, I would like to know. I think we, as a fan, we'd all love to know the honest truth. Yes, Just stay 
what really is the deal? That's all. Just whether it's just a real deal. And, and maybe they don't need to. Maybe, you know, but I'm a fan. Who gives a shit? And, and, As a fan, they don't need to. They're a business. And you know how much heat you're going to get when that that song comes out? When, when could the the, uh, the average person, I guess, or the, yeah, your fans get they, to hear that song? May 27th. May 27th, oh, you'll get so to hear the well. Brian Johnson song, which is going to... Wow, that's going to... that I can't wait. I, I I only heard a part of it. You played it for me on your phone one day for a little bit, and it was amazing. It was absolutely yeah, you amazing. Yeah, I heard you like, let's, let's fucking play it. You're, you're like hanging out with a... You're a bad oh. influence. You almost, <laughs> I almost... I, almost had, <laughs> I was this close. He's like, well, yeah. And then he's like, no, I can't do that. Uh, anyway, metalblade.com slash songs from the garage to pre-order Jim Brewer's album with this Brian Johnson song that's going to get a lot of heat when it finally hits. Yeah, the, the Brian Johnson, it's a cool... Uh, the, the name of the song is uh, If You Think I Quit, You're Dumber Than I Thought. Um... <laughs> 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 hey, uh, so Brewer, oh, you're down in Turks and Caicos, and all this, all hell's breaking loose, and like D is trying to get you. How long did it take for D to understand how serious this issue was? Oh God! It, and we were with another couple. Yeah. And when I when I came out of the bedroom, and um, it it was at least an hour and a half. Before I made an appearance, I was numb. Yeah. Um. They were like, "Were you? Were you just? Were you talking to D. Brian Johnson?" <laughs> I, went, I went. I went. Yeah. They're like, "Holy shit, dude! You're, you're over the internet. You're like all over the fucking internet." I went. Oh my god. Then they just sent me. So it took about. D. D. Finally, got it. She still doesn't really get it. She. She doesn't. <laughs> Can I tell you this? I told you what D said. D said this. Yeah. Right? Only a wife, only a wife would say this. Now I play her the song with Brian, and this is months ago. I go, D, listen. Oh my God, listen, listen how amazing the song is. You hear his voice kick in. Oh my God. She goes, Yeah, I, I don't know about this one. Um, <laughs> I, 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 he might be on it too much. Like he should have sang more on it. Let it breathe. No, it, Let the track breathe. I, I said, D, D, uh, I got to honestly say, you're way fucking off on this one. Okay? I, I'm just being honest with you. Yeah, no, I, I, know, you, I know you're being honest. But, um, yeah, no, this time I got to, you're off. You're a little off. You got to trust me on this day. If you want, yeah. no, yeah. yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you want a new kitchen? Yeah, we. <laughs> that's that's the track that's going to do it. That's the track that's going to build the patio. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! What a story! All right, Brewer, we'll let you go. So the uh, the dealer's on on his way finally with your damn tire. Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. Okay. Um, Jamie, man, I can't. You, you guys got to come see this beast in concert. I can't. I, I saw can't Jamie at Rock and Range. Oh, you got to check this out. Yeah, cool. yeah great. Thank you. Yeah, you got to come forth, hang, man. baby. And we got to do something for your show. June 4th. All yeah, right. Do that. All right, That'd buddy. All right, man. Have a good one, guys. Thanks, buddy, Jim. All right. Thank you. Thank you. See, I got I got my daughter these run flat tires, so that way you can go like fifty miles on the tire. I have them too. Yeah. yeah, they're amazing. It's great. You need that. Yeah. Especially if they're fucking with your tires like this, where you got to get a special tire from a dealer. That's ridiculous. When my tire blew out on the OIE, I was not by a good area. Uh, you know, I could look off. And I was like, oh, good. There's a crown chicken I could pull into and call AAA. So luckily I had those. Uh, we could keep moving on. I would have driven on a rim. Oh, yeah. You don't give a fuck. Let's buy a new one. I've done that before. Yeah, too. I've done that too. Yeah. So, uh, Jamie Jastin, studio from Hatebreed. Uh, you got a new song you want us to play today, right? Yeah, hopefully it's already in the system. I think it went in last night. Uh, what's the name it's of called it? It's called AD. AD? Yep. So why don't we fucking play this and take a break and all that shit and That'd regroup? Great. Is that cool? I'd love that. All right. And uh, Jimmy's hitting the road tonight. Where are we at, Jimmy? I don't know if we're sold out. We were, we were very close the other day. Ridgefield, Connecticut tonight, the Ridgefield Playhouse. And then uh, tomorrow I'm in Northampton, Massachusetts. And I forget the name of the gig. And uh, Burlington, Vermont for the first time ever on Saturday. Nice. And then next week is uh, New Orleans, St. Louis, and uh, Wisconsin. All right. 
Yeah. With that, let's play some Hate Parade. The, uh, is, it's got to be in the serious system, probably not on YouTube yet. I think it comes out I got on it, iTunes. I got it. Okay, it yeah, comes yeah. out on I mean, iTunes. Travis really shut that conversation down. <laughs> <laughs> Travis is very impatient. Man. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. Uh, pump this up, uh, Jamie. What are we going to listen to? It's here? the first single off the new album. The name of the album is The Concrete Confessional. It's coming out May 13th. This is the first single. It's called AD, and it'll be available on iTunes tonight at midnight. All right, well, let's play this. We'll be back. With OB and Jim. And Jamie Jasta from Hate Breed. I like the new song. It's Thank really you, great. Appreciate AD. AD, yes. Tonight, midnight on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, all that stuff. Oh, you're going to get some downloads today. I hope so. What? so. This is your seventh album? Yeah, seventh wow. studio album. Wow. We did a covers album, too, back in 09. What was your favorite cover? Probably Suicidal Maniac by Suicidal Tennessees or Slayer. You know, we did Ghosts of War, and that, that actually, we did like a real video for that with Paul Booth, did the art direction for the video, and it was, that actually, that was a big song for us. We kind of made it our own. You know, it's tough when you're doing other people's songs because... Sure. Did you have one that was completely out of the ordinary that you covered? Yeah, something you know, totally like different. A, like a bad company or like a... No. Like a fucking... Well, <laughs> escape, Metallica Escape. We thought, oh, oh this is going to be cool. great to you know pay homage to Metallica. And then and they heard it and they liked it, but that's the one song they never play that they don't like. But we just thought it was the one song that nobody ever covered, so let's do it. They don't like that song? Why? No, I don't know. Did they ever say why? No, you know, and I meant to ask James. We did two... They put us on two shows last summer, actually. Two stadium shows in Germany with uh, Creator and Faith No More. And this just goes to show how awesome Metallica is. They put, you know, uh, Exodus, Testament, Us, Creator on a stadium show. Jesus. And they put Creator right before them, you know, because they're like the big four of... They're one of the big four of uh, the German thrash. Okay. And so... I mean, that's a big deal. You know, they could have put on anybody. They could have put on Soundgarden or, you know, one of these other big, like, rock bands. But they stacked it with metal. Wow. Yeah. You must have loved that. Yeah. And then James came and did, like, he's like, let's do a picture with the four singers. So we, I have a picture with James, Zetro, Chuck, Billy, and myself. That's badass. Looking over the stadium. It was incredible. So they, you don't know why they don't like that song. Would you ever do a song that's not, like, uh, hate, like, like not in that genre? Like, Johnny Cash covered all these uh, songs that had nothing to do with country, which was awesome. I would do it with Josta. With that project, I would do it. With Hatebreed, I kind of want to just keep it sure. how right. it is because the fans you know, have built us up. It's been 20 years. If you make one sidestep, you're disappointing you know, a sure. couple million people. It's, I hear you. It's funny. It's I was, tough. I was yeah. just letting, listening to Metallica do Tuesday's Gone by Leonard Skinner oh, great, yesterday. Man. Great. They have a bunch of great covers. Yeah, they do. I mean, Merciful Fate. Who else do they do? Bob they Seger. Yeah. See, we're in different places. <laughs> <laughs> Thin Lizzy, of course. Yeah. What's the Thin Lizzy song to cover? Jailbreak. Um, uh, Whiskey in the Jar. Oh, that's right. Uh, they do Whiskey in the Jar. I, I should have known that. I love. That's from the Garage uh, mm. album, right? They're doing a stadium show in... Uh, you know, talk about stadium bands. ACDC and Metallica, they're like the last stadium bands, really. I mean, but they're doing a stadium show. It's sold out in 45 minutes in Minneapolis, August 20th. Unbelievable. We tried to get on it. We were, They gave it to Avenged and uh, somebody else, but... You gave it a shot? We were like, as soon as I heard... How do you lobby that? Do you text James and go, Minneapolis, cool, I know some great food places there. How <laughs> no, do you try I, to get on I, You know, you have your agent hit up their agent, their ma you know, my manager hit up their manager. But sometimes it works. Like, they're, you know, Five Finger Death Punch pulled out of that Sabbath tour in Australia. Why did we they? Were, I don't know. I would we, never have pulled out of we that were, tour. We, we were trying to get that tour for months, and... They pull out, and it's like, we would have stayed in there. We would have put on the kick-ass show, but, of course, we had already booked other stuff. So you couldn't do it. Um, not that we got, even got the offer to fill in, but they did They did write me back and said, hey, we might be working on something else. We'll see. Uh, so, all right. You yeah. never know. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jamie Jasta does a very good podcast, too, and you were talking about Kimbo Slice. You had him on, huh? Yeah, so I, oh. had, him, I had him on prior to the uh, announcement of the fight. and I said, Of the Dada 5000 fight. Yeah, and I said, Which you know, was ridiculously stupid. I said, why don't you do that in Miami? He's calling you out. You know, he, you, this could be cool. And they, he, I could tell it was going to happen, but he couldn't really announce it just yet. But he hinted towards it. So, you know, it was, it was, once they announced the fight, people were like, you called it. But how did he hint to it? He put some nitroglycerin on the table and pointed at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was funny because I was showing him the Hatebreed mosh pit. And, he, and I was like, yeah, well, let's do a video where you're the pit enforcer. 
And, you know, he's like, they're really hitting each other. They're going crazy. Like, what is this? Like, he didn't know what a mosh pit was. and he was Never like, heard of cool. a mosh pit? Yeah, and he's yeah. like, that's cool. And he was checking it out. He's like, these people are wild. He's like, I'll go in there. I'll go in. I Imagine that... you're in a mosh pit and you see Kimbo. You're like, oh, Jesus. fuck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's some white boy shit, the mosh pit, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he was a great guest. We I had a lot of good feedback from that episode. What did he talk about? Anything that was... We that talked about everything. Away? Yeah, I mean, we, t we talked about everything. He was... You know, I mean, in MMA, it's like, you know, I think now the belts don't mean as much. I think you want to see entertaining fights. Not that that fight turned out to be, you know, a, a physically... Um... It was entertaining as all <laughs> hell in a different way. Yes, it, like I, a train wreck. I left way. my ass off until I realized how fucked up Dada 5000 was. It came out yesterday. He uh, suffered two heart attacks and actually died during the Kimbo Slice fight. And they Did had to bring him back... Oh my Go God! Go back to the headline, Paul. I, oh, Paul. Uh, died during Kimbo Slice fight at Bellator 149, and he had what kidney failure, mm -hmm. right? I would have had the same thing happen. It just would have not taken as long. <laughs> like, like you know, he went. He lasted three rounds, and I would have had that happen within the first ten seconds. But I feel like he and I kind of have something in common. He well, we in, had to cut weight, so you figure he to was make in horrible shape. Five, yeah. Uh, yes, I did have kidney failure during the fight. I I also <laughs> had two heart attacks, which I did. Uh, code, a.k.a. died during the fight. Wow. Yeah. And then he's claiming, yes, I trained very hard for this fight, and I was in mm. fighting shape. You're in fighting shape? Yeah, he's, he's got some extra weight that. on him, you know, but these guys... I don't know if he was in fighting shape. Come on, yeah. I think he's bullshitting everybody. But those who knew me, they knew that something wasn't right by the look in my eyes when I stepped into that ring. But stay tuned for the rest of that shocking story. Huh? We You're going to give him another fight? No, uh, no. I, who, who the fuck would take a chance with an, another Dada 5000 fight? Yeah. But that, um, I mean, these guys couldn't even punch anymore. <clears throat> even Kimbo Slice couldn't get it. He couldn't get his yeah. fists up. And even. actually, if you watch that, he looks like like um, he knocks his hand off of Kimbo's shorts, and that's what makes him go down. Yeah. Because big, well, yeah, watch it. <laughs> See, it, it looks like you're watching them in slow motion. I it mean, was like rock em, sock em in slow motion, yeah. yeah. And then, look, see, he's holding on to the shorts, and look, he takes his hand off the shorts, and, and that was it. These are later. bigger gloves in Bellator. Aren't they bigger gloves than in UFC? Yeah, they're, like, curved, right? And they're padded better? But uh, Is that, that wrong? Didn't, that didn't even matter. No, I there think wasn't they even, are different. There, there wasn't even any uh, heavy blows in that. That was just somebody... When they stood him up from shape. Mount, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> huh? When they stood him up from Mount, like, you can't even throw a punch right. from the Mount, like... He, they stood him up, and they were like, all right, there's there's going to be a problem. Dude, those guys are hitting. They're such strong guys, though. Like, even when it doesn't look like they're hitting hard, those, they're, they're fucking really solid. But, you know, MMA enthusiasts that that tweeted me about this, I just said, look, you're you're getting eyes on the sport. Yeah, right. it's not in the situation that you want it in. But if Bellator keeps doing these types of, like, freak show fights, and they put great guys like Michael Chandler, I just had on my show. He's a great fighter. You put him on the undercard in the co-main event and build these guys up, build up the stars. I mean, they're not, now they're getting legit guys. They got Benson Henderson. Uh, they got Matt Mitrione, who's a great heavyweight. I didn't know he went over. Yeah. Mm. And he's I, great. Yeah, I just watched a fight with him where he fucking knocked somebody out horribly. Mm. Uh, oh, Gabriel Gonzaga was oh. on the fight for a couple of years ago. But it's one of those things where Bellator, I think it's over the endorsements. Like, you make more money... If you can endorse the product you want, but with UFC, it's like no, it's it's I think it's Reebok or whoever it is. Yeah, I, I sponsored a bunch of guys in Bellator. I had a Manuel New in with with uh, Hate wearing my shirt line. I I just you know you can have the guys come out to your song, they wear your stuff, and you know as soon as these guys come out, like I had Bobby Lashley come out. How much does that cost? I need to know. Uh, so they play it your song on the fighter, but they play your song and then they wear your shirt. Yeah, yeah. Give, a lot of times a... they'll do the song for free. The shirt is you know that's gonna sell to anybody. Condom Depot, you know, you remember all those different yeah. sponsors that they had in UFC. Well, now they're going over to Bellator, and but the value there is a lot of your a lot of people see the cool shirt and then want to go buy. Oh yeah, like yeah. When, when Bobby Lashley and a man. Emmanuel Newton, like Emmanuel Newton, he they called him the hardcore kid, and so we did like a shirt that says "Support your local hardcore kid," and every, you know we got a ton of orders from that. So it's you're seeing when you get your shirt on TV, national TV broadcast, like, you know, then it lives on YouTube. I mean, he was moshing. I mean, it's good exposure. I wish sure. all the fighters could get you that. Know, you know, shirts used to just be a throwaway thing that a band was like, yeah, a little pocket money. Now it's now everything. It's everything. It's everything for a lot of the, a lot of these bands. It it really is because touring and and merch is a, incredibly important because we all know most people try to get their you know music for free. But you just lose so much on the merch because the uh, the fucking house takes forty percent in some places, thirty percent. It's 
terrible how much money they want. That's the unions. That and now there's a new entertainment tax. Like I just had a Josta show Sunday night. I opened for Nonpoint at the Webster Theater, and they took out. And I'm I'm going there thinking I'm going to get paid cash, you know. Yeah. And they take out a new six percent entertainment tax. In what the fuck is that? I don't know, but you should check your settlement when next time you come to Connecticut. A six percent entertainment tax? Yeah. What is that? That's just it's off another, the top cash. Just, just another fucking way. And it's in the, the, the all the paperwork was legit. State of Connecticut. They decide they want to put another inch in your asshole. Yeah, yeah, so if you're paying much your agent, you're getting your man in the ass, but let's really fucking fuck him hard. Yeah, and if you're an independent contractor, you're self-employed, it's, um, you know, it's getting harder and oh, harder. Scumbag. Let me ask you this, and because uh, 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 you know the business. Now, if T-shirts are really important, and you know the venue is taking 40% or whatever, don't you have a, don't you have a guy that's like uh, a couple blocks away from the venue with the quote fake ones, but they're not really fake. Some bands are doing that. They call it a pop up shop, and Smart. They'll, they'll open up at like two in the afternoon. But again, you got to get the paperwork. You have to get like no. A I'm talking license. about just get the guys that are just rolling. Yeah, rolling you, with the shirts. You could do that, but look, every I, I think look, everybody's got to eat, and everybody's got to eat well. There's got to be a way to make it so that it's more fair for the artist. But look, look, I agree with that. But they're eating filet mignon. I know. That's the problem. I get everyone needs to eat, but they're taking advantage of artists. I've seen this forever. What, but why? what forever. is the tax? Is, is that like a withholding where you'll get it back? Like a lot of places, take they tax you now because performers weren't paying the state tax. So you go in there, you do Massachusetts, you do California, and then you'll fuck you at the end because you live in New York. So the venues got smart, and you know now that there's no more cash, and it's all fucking accountable, and they started taxing you. So I, I pay a tax... Like, yo, you lost this much for time. All right. But usually my accountant gets that back if that's the only money I've made in that state. But, okay. You know what I mean? It's, it's, but they're that's just something doing I got to look into. Is right? that what this is? It's, it's, I don't think so because I had to deposit a into more. my agency. Yeah. So, like, they'll send, you know, half of the, the guarantee, and then I'm supposed to pick up the other half cash. <clears throat> But it, it's it's just getting harder and harder, and I, I really hope we'll see. I mean, things might change. Maybe some of the streaming revenue will go up depending on how you negotiate your deal. Because right now the streaming revenue is really bad for the artists because they're paying the labels directly, mm -hmm. and then you know obviously the torrents. You can go on, um, you know, these torrents. You just get the album for free. But, but there, you know, there are fans, especially in metal, they still want the physical. Um, I was going to ask you this, and they're pretty loyal to their bands too, so they understand uh, what what's kind of going on. So you definitely have a bunch of fans that are like, "Look, I got to just pay for this fucking thing. They, it's it's just the right thing to do." They get it. You and get like, that, right? Yeah, and we do the VIP upgrade. So if you have a ticket and you want to meet the band and get all the limited items, like that's at HatebreedVIP.com, and that's almost totally sold out in advance. The tour doesn't start till May thirteenth, right. so that really helps. Like we we got flack originally for that like oh you know you're charging your fans no no we're not we're charging for the items the, the meet and greet is just just the bonus yeah. but it's it depends like in in a i guess more pop genre it's it's totally commonplace but you know it's hard i mean look at uh bieber just canceled his whole meet and greet for the whole tour why because i i heard and i hopefully i'm not why i, I mean I, I, heard, like that. I heard that he had a security issue and that it was, what do you mean a security issue? i heard that somebody uh got a little crazy so I don't know if that was a major liability because think about it if you if you're not vetting everybody and if you're not patting them down like for his but well, what was read, the, what was the uh, the situation I think they I think they they're not talking about it I, but I think it was probably something that was did somebody self harm well he said he self harm he said look I, he does it before the show and so do we but he said it was very emotionally draining I mean I remember on a lot of Ozfests we would go and do it and some days you you hug 500 people and you and you know it is draining but these are the people that are providing you with a great life you know they're really supporting everything that you do so you want to give back vips only um still on for vips only so yeah. what's probably happening is uh they probably were putting too many people there and he's just like uh all right good so my tickets are still good that's all i care about I, i'm digging them in the dreads <laughs> There was a big discussion online whether Justin Bieber looks cool with the dreads or not. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What's he's still wow? doing the backstage so meeting. So he's charging two grand, so 50 people is 100 grand a night. Cash. Yeah. But he's also saying, who can vouch that you're no security risk? Yes, yeah, something happened uh, in the stress of beating fans' expectations. 
Well, they're screaming in his fucking ear every every. Yeah, they're freaking out. They're shaking. They're trembling. They're That's passing be... out. I was backstage like at a at a good Charlotte concert like fifteen years ago uh, in Hartford, and the way that people were acting, I was like, "Get it together!" Like I, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm not a big you know pop punk fan, but I the... cried when I met the Beeps. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a little strange. Yeah, I mean, uh, there must have been some kind of a problem. If he's fucking canceling that, that's a lot of money. He's wearing a Marilyn yeah. Manson shirt on stage. I do I do these meet and greets, but I keep it to two in the back. I say no more than two. I'm sure I could <laughs> sell more. Um, Just a couple ladies? Absolutely. Whoever wants to pay. M-E-A-T. <laughs> yeah, but meet and greet. <laughs> Backstage at a Jim Norton show is very quiet. There's not a lot of people around you. No. It's like you, your opener, Kenny... That's it, and that's pretty and much that's it. good, it's, man. It's Keep very quiet, small. The, very quiet in the green room. And when I do certain meet and greets, I'll do them before as well, because uh, the venues get pissed off if you stand out there too long. It's a whole thing. It's different than comedy clubs. The, the oh yeah, no. When I saw Dice in Vegas, he came out after. It was like by the shirts, you know, hanging out, and then you know you're gonna have to talk. Those people aren't gonna leave if you come out. You're gonna have to talk to. I think there's probably forty, fifty people still there. It was late, but. Yeah, you're going to have to sit there and give everybody their time. I mean, they came, they paid, they bought a shirt, they bought a DVD, a CD. They want a little time with you. Yeah, yeah. they do. They want they want a little time. They want to have a moment with you. Yeah, a little moment. But so it was great to see Dice do that because I was like, you know, this guy was the, at one point the biggest comedian ever. And, then, and he's still very down to earth and very cool like that. Well, that's so not like him, too, to do meet and greet. I mean, on the road with him for years, he never wanted to meet people or... Now I guess he's just kind of like, hey man, you can make merch money, and it's and he's building up again. He's doing great. That's I saw yeah. the Adrian Brody episode. It's fucking hilarious. Isn't it amazing? I love it. I love this fucking show. I we, love Dice's show. I gotta see it. I heard he doesn't do that often. I think it was just for that. No, that. I mean his Showtime show. He oh. does. He does a Showtime show now, and it's really funny. I can't man. believe it's only six episodes. What well, is Showtime thinking? Uh, at least they gave him six. You know, it'll do uh, well, and it, they'll get more. Uh, showtime will definitely bring this show back for way more episodes. But the Adrian Brody episode is amazing. We got we have him coming in. So we get to talk to him. Adrian about Brody? That. Yeah. When? We got, well, we said yes to him. We'll see how it pans out. What's up with that guy? See, that, that that just shows you how fleeting Hollywood is. Like, that guy was in King Kong. He was in all these movies. He won the Oscar. Yeah. Like, where? The piano. The, the, how the, long ago did it? He went away. I mean. I, I think he's probably just doing his, his last big. Did he have issues or? The pianist was 2002. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, but he he's was been working everywhere. Since. King Kong. Yeah, but the. Uh, the village. Uh, oh, Splice, that was that was the misstep for that guy. Come on, look at all this. There's nothing in there that anyone really saw. Yeah, he hasn't done amazing movies, but he might be making good money. Uh, just grabbing Midnight money. in That's Paris true. he was in. That Straight was to DVD. 2011 mm. he was in Midnight in Paris. Okay. Predators wasn't bad, I gotta say. As a fan of the Predator universe, that wasn't that bad. I enjoyed that. I watched that on a flight. Never yeah. saw it. Go back to his movies. He's taking some, uh, he's just making some cash. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 keep he's a going. good actor, too. Yeah, he's very good. But for the most part, no one saw any of these movies. Has he done any TV that's big? No, not much. Harry Houdini, he played. He probably oh just picks and chooses what he likes. He, he kind of went away. But Dice brings him back nicely in the Showtime yeah. show. It's a great episode. Really. I think you'll like it there, uh, Jamie. I just got the Showtime app, as a matter of fact, because I want to watch the show Gigolos. Yeah, I have not, but I, I don't need amazing. to. It's just I feel it's almost autobiographical. <laughs> what is Gigolos about? Male Gigolos, and they, they <laughs> you got to really want to see this, huh? yeah, because <laughs> yes. it's hilarious that seeing the babes that they have. Oh, Gigolos! I, I thought it was about ICP's fans. Oh, I missed something. <laughs> this show is incredible. Wait, let me see the trailer. You have, come on, I gotta check and, this out. And they bang like lonely ladies. Right. Meet Nick. There's nobody out there more competitive than me. I strive <laughs> to be the best at everything I do. Jimmy. I'm adventurous. I'm willing to try quite a lot. Brace. The Brace philosophy is this to dude. really be good to people. Steven. Just looking for a love like everybody else. This is me. You can take it or leave it. And then... I really love women. I would consider myself like a real feminist. Five friends who know how to have a good time. And in a town where love is a gamble. Woo! So, how's the day go? She's a cool girl. More of a, like a brother-sister relationship. These guys... If we're at the club trying to pick up girls, we're competing with each other 24-7. Are a sure thing. Being a gigolo isn't always easy. Showtime presents a new reality series about the hardest working men in Vegas. Being a mom of two, there's full time for dating. All I wanted was a guy to just have some adult fun with. Oh, my. It was wonderful, respectful, and it was sexy. It's time that I just have some fun. 
I make people happy. I don't think there's anything better out there to do. Gigolos, new episodes, Thursdays at 11, beginning April 7. Interesting. Maybe redefined. I think I would watch that. Yeah, you know, so it's like... Well, who's it's the old lady dog. in the trailer? Oh, God. It's hot dog TV. Like, sometimes you want to watch, you know, like, a, a real serious good show, and then sometimes you want to, you know, sometimes you want a like, steak, sometimes you want a hot dog. Yep, absolutely. Like, Whichever one you can get in your hiney. <laughs> Like Horace and Pete, have you checked out Horace and Pete yet? Louis no, C. but K. I heard show? it's great. Oh. No, I got to pay five bucks or something, and then it, you download it. You go it five, and, and then you go three, and then I think you start at five, and then it goes down to yes. three. Just ten episodes, so it's going to cost you about forty bucks or so. See, we got to do this 30, with music. Thirty something bucks. Every band needs to copy the Louis C.K. way. Do the live DVDs like that. Shoot it yourself, and then just have it easy. I loved his special. It was so simple. It was literally one click. Then the the file pops up. You can give it to everybody you want. Share it how you want it. It's not like blocked, and you got to put a password. I hope he set up some kind of app where, as as everyone's doing their one click, he watches bank accounts just go. Oh yeah, he said he had a million dollars in his PayPal, the, like in a day. Unbelievable from the uh, special. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I want to do the next April live DVD like that because look at go to Best Buy. Look at the DVD section. It's yeah. so small now, especially Best Buy. music. Uh, please. Yeah, I mean that is going away. You don't, you le you learn you don't really need the middleman anymore. You can do it all your fucking self. You just need a good web guy. You really do. But see, the, now everybody who does these sites though, they know that you can charge a lot for this. Look how good that looks. Yeah, his site is the best out there. I think I might even have contacted them saying we should do this for a music, a live music DVD. But Horace and Pete was really good, really dark, really well done, well written. Somebody in music needs to do a show like that. Yeah, you know, there's no, there's no music. I guess vinyl is the new one, right? That's yes. supposed to be good. It's good. I liked it, but uh, another show I tapped out of. I guess. Dice is in the first one. First, right. Okay. First couple episodes, Dice kills it. I love it, man. I'm watching. I, I you know, I gotta oh, remember. It? Yeah, man. I just forget it's on. It's like then you go back and watch three or four. Like, oh, I'm caught up. Well, I got Horace and Pete done, so now I can move on. I, I, I want to see the David Brent trailer. Uh, that just popped. Yes, I want to see this. Life on the road. This, yeah, what is, this is brand fucking new. It's the you know the office, the character the, from the office, the original office. This is I guess the film he's doing. Yeah. Oh. Hello, love you, Kim. He's back. Do you miss me? Hello, I'm David Brent. You probably know me as the star of the BBC Two documentary, The Office, back in 2000 and... <laughs> no, that was then. This is now. I'm currently a singer-songwriter. Uh, and a rep. We've got one song. <laughs> it's, it's about rock and roll, but it's a metaphor for sex. He goes, I'm gonna roll you over and rock you stupid and leave you there just humming. There's a party in my trousers, baby, and everybody's coming. <laughs> you get it? Ask me how I'm spelling coming. How are you spelling coming? C U M I N. That's cumin. Double N. Think. <laughs> it's the positive. That's cumin. So, yeah. <sighs> oh, God. Oh, that's all coming. Mm. Uh, well, not with, but with, you know. Although well, some women do <laughs> squirt. Don't know what. Juice. Oh, juice. Oh, my God. God. This is going to be great. Yeah. Oh, that made my stomach hurt. Yeah. So uncomfortable. Oh, God. <laughs> David Brandt, Life on the Road. When, it comes out in the summer. August, nice. Uh, two thousand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Good for him. Uh, the uh, TSA thing under fire. Why are they under fire? They spent forty-seven thousand dollars on an app that points left or right. Very good. I, I, it's very. I, that's a great discount. Of. I've had such a good interaction with the TSA lately. I don't want to jinx it. It's been so good. I got the pre-check. I cruise right through. A lot of times they know us, especially like at JFK or LaGuardia or they're Newark. used to seeing you. Yeah, and they're really cool. There's been a lot of fans. Like in Hartford, too, there's fans that work through it. So I've had, like, 
I've been very lucky, knock on wood. I've had good experiences with the TSA. I have too, by and large. I mean, but, uh, you know, pre-check, I qualified for pre-check, and I like to go right through there. But that line's now as long as any other one. I know. Now it is getting long. But, you know, the lot of, like, a lot of dudes in bands, they're, like, you know, pierced up and tattoos, and they want to make a big deal. Oh, you, why are you pulling me over? Why do I got to get searched? It's like, dude, just relax. It's like they're doing their job. Mm. You know, you hope that if anything really is going to go awry, that they got it under control. I, I deal with just being pulled out of line now. Yeah, I, I don't care. I, it's like whatever. I show up a little early. At least when I talk to you, it's just like whatever. Pat me down. Yeah, feel, feel my dick if you have to. <laughs> Give me my fucking stuff back. I'm out of here. Thank you. Uh, but the TSA has an app. They spend too much money on this thing. What's it point left and right? What's it do? I don't know. What, huh, Paul? Hey, the randomizer. Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah, all of it together. Oh. Ew. Oh, my God. She Pause this. She starts explaining what it does in a little bit. But why can't she just go left and right? Because right, this way you can't be... Because we're so sensitive about being accused of any type of bias. Oh, Christ. It must be random. So what are the two lines? What well, how is, what is the random line? help? Uh, what is it? It well, doesn't. It's it's a, to appease people so you can never be accused of using your intuition and profiling. So, uh, but what? Okay. But what is? What We're happens if you go country. left and what happens if you go right? What are the two options? One might be uh, a, one's a, for additional screening. Additional screening. Yeah. Okay, so you got a lady, and she has an iPad, and she taps the iPad as you're in front of her, and it tells you either there's an arrow that points left or right. That is so fucking weird. And her whole job is just to tap. And so it's just like a random thing to see which line you go in? It's a random thing. Okay. Oh. So she keeps tapping and, and then the groups go in together? So you switch them depending on age and... Yeah, there's a few criteria, but mostly it's randomizer. Okay. Randomizer. What the fuck is that? Can you pause? The best part of this video is a guy goes, can I get out of here? Like, you, you might want to check why he's in a hurry to get out of the fucking line out of, out of nowhere. Did anyone else pick up I on that? I didn't see it, no. Go back. Like, she's just tapping her dumb iPad that's showing the left and right arrow. And there's a guy on the right side, like, sort of in a panic, like, how do I get out of here? I need to get out of here. Oh, yeah, you're right. Look, this guy. Look at him. So you switch them depending on... Agent ah. <laughs> he just steps out of line and she doesn't even notice. He could have dropped a little something something in that area, no? No, right. He looks like Shane uh Shane McMahon too a little bit. All right. So they, they spent forty seven thousand dollars on that? Uh, to figure out the uh the left arrow, right arrow thing. That's terrible. They could have literally just fucking flipped a coin for free. Oh, please, exactly. One but, one cool system they have now is that global priority. That's great. What's you that? Customs. If you're going out of the country, it's. A, I suggest you do it. It's. It's. It's worth the money. You go. You get an interview. They. Uh, they give you a background check. They take your fingerprints. And now, like when I come back from, wherever Germany, like I came back from South America, you go to a different line. You put your fingerprints on the thing, and you go right through. And sometimes when flights come in together, there's like a thousand people in line. That's right. So. You can just pass everybody, get out to your car service, and I'm back in Connecticut in like 90 minutes. It's amazing. Yeah, that's that's the best way to do it. I, I don't uh, I don't travel internationally enough. Is that the uh, it's global priority? It's called, I think. It's not TSA pre. No, it's different. But you get that as like a bonus when you do it. Right. I'm a Delta guy, you know. Jamie, you, I you do you talk about Nicholas and what happened to him? No, I don't you comment know? about it. Just because Nicholas, who? holy fuck! Can he, I at least tell the story? Yeah, but it, to me, like the people that are closer, like his mother and his brother, like I, you know, it's uh, Nicholas played it's a with messed the, up situation. Played with the band from '96 to '97, was convicted of felony murder last month. Oh, now, now faces up to 90 years in jail for killing a man during a home invasion. Oh, and so this is like you know you, you're coming out with a new album. Think about the bad press that we've gotten over the years. Yeah. Right? Think about we try to get metal to be you know this accepted music. We're looked sure. at as like it's just noise. It's terrible. It's these violent, shitty people and stuff. And then this type of story comes out, and it's like we're starting from square one, where we're like, no, we have a new album. We want to be right. talking about that, but it is what it is. I mean, when we had the CNN thing, and now this, uh, it's like we can't catch a break, but. A lot of the stories, it was a little bit clickbaitish, you know. I, I, sure. I, 
it's it's too bad because I really feel like we already have enough bad stories about metal. You had the whole Phil Anselmo thing, yet now this. It's just like people who don't know about metal and hardcore music, they see that and they just judge everybody. And they just want to focus on that instead yeah. of everything else that's going on in the scene. Oh, yeah, and there's so many good bands. There's so many people doing positive things, people doing charitable things, smart intellectual people that are that are actually moving music forward. These and these are people that they write their own songs. They actually perform. They're not just hitting play on a laptop. They're not uh out there playing to tracks. Yeah. Metal and rock is still a pure form of music where people are actually performing it and yet you know the biggest exposure we get is off a negative story like this i gotta be honest i was one of those dummies with your whole genre i was like ah uh, you know almost like throwaway stuff and then i've had a lot of you guys in now you guys are fucking pretty bright and really smart uh, yeah look at smart. randy from lamb of god like, oh my god they, he's, he's ridiculous but the biggest story is you google him and he's like it pushed somebody off the stage and he yeah. killed him which is not true no it's i know he, he he uh yeah he broke all that down for us a, a while ago now but we've had Corey taylor in here you and it's like you guys are really really fucking bright really intelligent people Thank you. No, I, I think that metal, it, there is going to come a time where we're going to be looked at as a serious genre, and we're getting there. It's just you got to deal with the setbacks, and of course, negative press gets the clicks, it gets the ad dollars. Everybody, that you know, that story went viral, and I'm sure that everybody was getting a check, and I, I understand. I get it. That's how, that's someone how the media just, works. Was that something you guys just had to deal with over the years, or, or someone just dug that up out of nowhere? Um... I think originally maybe one of the local papers brought it up or was on the local news or something because he, you know, he had filled in for a tour. Yeah. Um, and they yeah, don't, he they never don't, recorded with you guys or anything. If he did, maybe it was a couple songs that were never released. Right? It's 96 and 97. I mean, it's not like it was like two weeks ago. It's, it's fucking almost 20 years ago. Right. But that's, if you just put, you know, he, he had a, a rap career for a little bit. If you just put that, that's not going to get clicks. That's not going to go viral. But if you put, the connection to hate breed then it's going to go viral and you know well, it is what it is but well i mean sorry to bring it up then but wow that's crazy no, you, a new story it's, yeah we, we can't really get story. around it i mean but we with the new album coming out now i'm hoping that we can have you know more focus on the fact that the tours are doing good we're selling tickets the you know the pre-orders are good that vip thing is already sold out so it's not like i don't think people are getting scared away it's just that people that don't know about metal don't know about us they just see that and they go oh that's this is why i'm not into that shit. you don't want to be a part of the negative shit around it when it had nothing it had nothing to do with you guys it's just the guy who played with the band briefly yeah who fucked up uh, years later Right. I mean, it can't be avoided. And you can't, you don't have a crystal ball when you're doing this stuff. All right, this guy is going to be a disaster someday in 20, you know. How about the guy from, a, that's like that's like giving Chaz Palminteri shit because the guy from a Bronx Tale uh, was involved in a BE where an off-duty cop was shot. Mm -hmm. Remember that? He's out of yes. jail now. Uh, I forget his name. Um, I always forget his name. Played C in a Bronx Tale. Yeah. But they don't do that with him. They're not blaming uh, De Niro or. or uh, right. Right. All right. Well, we could certainly move on, Jamie. That's a... Oh, uh, what's his name? Huh? Who's that? Oh, yeah. I remember that. Wait, what's this no, now? that's not him. No, no that's, that's not, not the guy. Him, yeah. Lilio Bracado. Yes, this guy. Oh, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> he, did, he, did, um, he probably played C at a different age. He did. At a young C. He did some time. What did he do, seven years? Something like that. He was in The Sopranos. Tony killed him in, like, the first yep. season. Mommy pisses himself. You know, some people have hit me up and they said, hey, man, you know, any publicity is good publicity. And I guess there is some truth to sure. that, to, to, to keep the name out there, because there, there's a million bands. Mm -hmm. There's a million metal bands and a million hardcore bands. But we've been giving people, I think, is a, what is a positive experience. You've got people, they leave the show, they write us on Twitter, or they'll come up to us by the bus or whatever, and they'll, they'll say, for that hour and a half, I had no bills, I had no drama with my wife, it was, a, it was a transformational therapeutic experience. And that's how it was for me going to shows when I was growing up. Yeah. I, would, I would go to that show, and the loud amps were in the face, and everything was shut off, and it was like the best experience. And it's still like that for me. Yeah. Uh, let me say hi to, uh, where are we? Bobby in Indiana. Bobby, we're talking to Jamie Jasta from Haypre. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? I, I had a, a weird question. It's kind of hard to word it. Uh, uh, I'm a musician myself, uh, and I, I just, uh, so I don't mean any disrespect by this. Uh, one, I wanted to know what you guys tune to. 
uh, and like what your standard tuning was. And then, uh, so the, the, the song, I've never listened to you guys before, uh, you know, and so I'm going to definitely download the, uh, the album. But, uh, so the song sounded like a very basic chord progression. And I was just kind of wondering, is there more behind the scenes that, you know, we don't quite, quite hear in your chord progression or like how, uh, how, how dynamic are you guys getting? I saw, I literally heard, you know, just repetitive chord progressions in a crazy ass drummer. But, you know, so I just kind of wondered, you know, just a little more in depth about that, if you didn't mind. Yeah, no, I don't mind at all. This, it's, it's really easy to compl complicate things. It's very hard to simplify. And that's what we did on this. We're like, let's simplify it. Let's just, you know, because we like the Ramones. We like the Clash. We like ACDC. And, and, you know, that's, that's what people say about them. So we're like, can we be the ACDC or the Ramones of, of hardcore metal or crossover or whatever? Can we do that? And I think, to a certain extent, we've been able to do that. It's got to be catchy. It's got to be brutal. Sure, we can have a, a, a technical solo or we could have some crazy right. drum fills and have guys show off here and there. But for us, it was never really about the noodling. And we too, I think it's standard C or C sharp that we tune to. What's the difference between those two things? I mean, I know what the audience says. <laughs> <laughs> What's the C sharp? Smart woman? <laughs> I mean, there's songs we tune <laughs> There's songs we tune to B. In my other band with Kirk from Crowbar, we tune down as low as A. But that stuff's really hard. Hard to sing in because you got to right. go oh, no. really low. I hear you. Um, yeah, but, yeah, but I hear you. you know, for the headbanging and moshing purposes for this record, we're like, you know what? Let's just strip it down and simplify it. Let me ask you a question about the Ramones right. because the Ramones were what was it? Three or four guys, three musicians and the singer, and they, they they're so simple. And every song sounds like a Ramones song, but every song sounds different. They they were an amazing. They, you think you wouldn't be able to tell one from the other, but yet every one of them sounds different. They were incredible and. Like us, they would never had a gold album. Maybe the greatest hits finally went gold after 15 years or something. But yeah, they didn't sell at all. I mean, right. like fucking Phil Spector even did one of their records and it didn't uh, sell what they wanted to. But we can go all over the world, play to thousands of people, sometimes hundreds of thousands of people on a tour, and you know the people know the songs, people have the words tattooed on them, you see the merch everywhere. I mean, even yesterday walking around, I saw a couple hate breed shirts in the city. So, I mean, that's what you want. You want to be a career artist, you want to be somebody that resonates with people and likes your songs. The songs got to be catchy. Mm. There right. you go. Right. All right, Bobby. Hey, uh, one, one, more, one more question real quick. I don't mean to hold up. Oh, uh, so, what, what would you say uh, to, you know, aspiring artists? I'm, I'm 34 years old and uh, just finally feel like I'm getting traction. I, you know, just just a couple new songs I've written. So what would you what would you say? How how do I gain some more traction in the music industry? I would say stick with it and and get all your social media correct. Make sure you have someone who knows what they're doing with that. You can do sponsored posts on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. Like I'm not I say don't be a stick in the mud. You have to move with the technology. Oh. You can upload your... Uh, Easy with the language. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought I would hear the lead singer of uh, Hatebreed say stick in yeah, the mud. Yeah, you know what really sticks in my car? Well, there's a out. lot of dudes. Yeah. Business. There's a lot of dudes that are stuck. <laughs> and everybody else is going past The them. old stick in the mud. That is <laughs> so funny. You spent all this harsh language. No kidding. You know? <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, you got You have to have all that yeah. stuff in order, and then you know, you there's there's like tune, tune core. You can get your stuff up on Spotify and Apple Music. You could be totally right. DIY. If you go to jostahq.bandcamp.com, I put out two songs last year. One was a was a uh, entrance music for Matt Brown, a UFC fighter, his entrance oh, yeah. song, and then the other was a song for a trauma film called. Uh, uh, Return to Newcomb High. And I did it totally DIY, without a, a label, and uh, it goes right into my PayPal. And it was a cool experiment because then you could see how many downloads you're getting, where they're coming from. Like today, obviously, if I get a bunch of so singles sold, I'll know that it was from this appearance. And yeah. so you have to be able to track where your fans are. And I say, look, 34, that's young. I mean, I, there's guys that have broke. Look at Five Finger Death Punch. Look at Godsmack. They broke in their 30s or late 30s, right? Because Sully like was up there. Sully was already doing Malaya I'm, Rage. And, I'm and trying to think. He probably was... He was, probably, uh, yeah, he was probably 33 at least. Doing covers. At doing, least? Yeah. I Wait, think. When, when they broke? Yes. Mm -hmm. When Godsmack, oh, Sully. When Godsmack yeah. broke. Because he was in a thrash band back in the day. And then he then he got huge with Godsmack. He was kicking around Boston when we were up there. Oh, 48. And, okay. And he he hit just as uh, we were leaving. So He really doesn't like Nikki Six. Why? <laughs> what happened? He, like, I, I probably... Uh, pulled the pin on the grenade on that one on my show and that went crazy because he just, I don't know this he one just yet. went off 
What, what happened? Yeah, so you don't know any of the Nikki Six? Uh, I little, do not earn no. a beef. Oh, no. No. epic! Please uh, work us through it. And they, mouth. and they gave me credit. They gave me credit. They actually credited my show on this, which was really cool. That they they. Interesting. The, the quote is from Sully. Motley Crue's Nikki Six is an old, <laughs> fat, washed up has been who treats people like shit. So Nikki, he has the open invite to 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 come on my show and, you know, but he I guess he went on Twitter and was like, whatever, he had What's this about though? Where did this say? start? Yeah, what exactly is going so on? So they were on tour. There's and the I guess, Jasta show in yeah. print. Nice. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Sully was very gracious. He's always been super cool. He's one of the cool like uh, even back when we had him on Headbangers, he's always been great. But so th I guess when they did the Crew Fest, they went to go get their laminates and Nikki wrote on like a a piece of paper and laminated it, opening band, and gave him the laminate. What a dick! <laughs> gave it to Sully. Is that uh, true? That's what that's what Fuck Sully said. Nikki Six. <laughs> Wait, well, why did he do that? Was he being a, a, was he trying to be funny or kidding or being a jerk? No, him? I think it was he was he was trying to be a little mean. Okay, wow. He, he was trying to and show S where their place is. Uh, and then I, Sully wrote Sully a song all the way. Oh, he wrote a he song. He wrote a song, "Crying Like a Bitch." That's for Nikki Six. Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. See, we need, if any directors are out there, let's do a DVD, Rock Beef. Remember the Rap Beef DVD? Yeah. <laughs> let's do a Netflix special, Rock Beef. I'll hold it. I'll host it. Crying Like a Bitch is a really good song. I didn't That's know that. I sh should I have known that was about Nikki Six? Godsmack, I will say this. Godsmack, when you go see him play, there's no Ridiculous. tracks. There's no tracks. There's no tape. They'll do a drum thing together where they're dueling. They, when we did that Mayhem Fest with them, they gave Disturbed a run every night. It w and Disturbed is huge. Millions of records, millions of hits. The Godsmack brought it every night. So I got to give it to Sully. He sings his ass off. He can play drums. He's talented. I love Sully. I yeah, love he's Godsmack. Awesome. To this day, I still love listening to Godsmack. Uh, go back to that because uh, the quote is, I'll say it straight out. I've never met a bigger... I shouldn't have brought this up again. <laughs> he's going to be like, why? oh, why? Fuck this. Why not? Yeah. Fuck this. It'll get us off uh, what, what I want to know you're smart as Jamie Jasta. Oh, smart. Right. he says right here what happened. Erna continued. Nikki went into the restroom before me. I specifically asked him to put the seat back down, and he didn't. <laughs> During, I, I want to read this part of it too, even though it's not highlighted for me. During an appearance on the latest installment of Hatebreed Frontman uh, Jamie Jasta's official podcast, The Jasta Show, Ernest uh, Ernest stated about uh, six. Uh, hear audio below, by the way. We should just play the audio. Should we just play the audio? Why, they play, singled out the audio? No, let's you play the audio. Let's, let's just play the audio. We gotta there play the audio. There you are. Look how fucking cool you look there, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, but how are you going to find it in the file? Yeah, it's the whole show. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, what, what else have we got to through? do yeah. today? <laughs> what file? <laughs> why don't we just play the whole file? <laughs> what file? <laughs> Can you guys find it, though? I mean, I'll read this, but then find it. And find a little more of this. And you, you know, you guys, you kind of, you fucked up my Lita Ford episode. Like I was gonna, I was gonna try to do the yeah. follow up and yeah. everything, and then you know, now it's shut down. I, what maybe happened? I'll still do it. Oh yeah, that's right. You texted me. What yeah. Do you mean, what yeah. do you mean to shut? Because I wanted to talk about the appearance, and I, I felt like you know there was no closure there. Like after you guys talked about it the next day, we got we had the husband in. Yeah, we oh, on, you the did? Phone, on the phone and the and the son. Yeah, we talked to oh. them on the phone. Oh, okay. oh, and the son really makes it clear that he does not want to see his mom lead a Ford anytime soon. Yes, yeah, he's I, an MMA fighter or trainer. Uh, really? Is he fighting officially? I don't know. I, th I know he's training, and, and that's his goal to fight. Well, I, I really like her PR people, and I was like, I don't want to turn this into like a TMZ thing, but I wanted to talk about the Iomi accusations yeah. because that's really disappointing. And, and but then after hearing her appearance, and then you know what Jim said, and then hearing what you're saying now, it's like. Maybe there isn't much credibility to the story, but I mean, I would really have to talk to her about it. But again, I don't want to be like, I, sure. I, I don't, I'm not like a journalist. I'm not like the press. I'm just I, a musician trying to do a I, podcast. I was looking at her that day, my humble opinion. I was looking at someone that has some mental issues. Really? Yes. Yeah. And it was sort of backed up by the ex and, and, and the, and the son. I don't know for sure. You got to say that. I have no just idea. Just an opinion. But my yeah. opinion is she, she's got some, some definite it, issues. It didn't seem like you guys were prying. Like it just, that was the direction that the interview went. Right. And it got weird. It did. That it was... got weird. Uh, anyway, back to this though. So on your podcast, Sully from Godsmack says, I'll say it straight out. I've never met a bigger fucking dick in my life than wow. Mickey Six. He's a douchebag. He's straight up a fucking douche, and I don't give a fuck what he says. He knows exactly where I am, and he knows exactly how he can find me anytime that motherfucker has the balls to come and look me up. 
And I'll say straight out in your podcast, he's a dick, man. He just treats people like shit. Good for you, Jamie, getting that. You know, uh, with Nikki, I, I've met him a few times. I interviewed him, and he's always been nice in the interviews. The first time I met him, we had this. I had the same agent as Motley Crue, so I went to see them and uh, to get a photo with each one. And my and the guy Dennis Arthur, who ran the agency, introduced us, and they were all great. But Nikki, I was going to take a picture with. And he goes, nah, man, I need to, to the agent, kind of, to me. He's, nah, not now, man, I'm going on. But afterwards, he did. Um, but he wasn't, uh, he was a little dicey at first. Well, when he was doing Brides of Destruction, they were going to have him on Headbangers, even though it really wasn't kind of what we were doing at the time. Yeah. And I said, hey, look, it's not up to me, but it's Nikki Six. You kind of got to have him on yeah. the show, <laughs> even if the record was a little cheesy or, you know, you didn't know how long it was going to last, because I don't think it even lasted. Which record? The Brides of Destruction. I think... I talked to him again. He was great on the show. I talked to him again at Download. We did, like, I think it was probably Download 2004 or 2005. Yeah. And Brides of Destruction played. And then, um, and I think we traded emails or whatever, but I haven't really heard f back from him since. But I, someone told me that he put us in his Best Buy end cap. Like, Nikki Six says, check these bands out on the last album. I guess he picked us and put us in there, which was really cool. So he has an open invite to come on my show and, and talk Address about it, this. Sure. Well, but boy, he did does, you fuck that up. He does his own show. And then, like, we were in Sweden. We played together at Sweden Rock. Yeah. And I waited and waited and waited. And then the publicist was like, look, he's going to do... He's going to do MTV Sweden. He's going to do the biggest newspaper. And then he did both of those. And both of them kind of really like donged them off the next day and said the show was sucked. And, and like, it's like, man, he gave you the exclusives. It's the, it's the final tour. And then they kind of. They fuck him over. Yeah. But maybe they weren't really that bad. I, we didn't get to stay, but we did get to see Molly Hatchet. They were great, and we saw who else? We, it was we were like the 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 redheaded stepchild on that show. But uh, who's singing for Molly Hatchet these days? There's no. I don't think there's any original members. No, I know there's not. Yeah, because way back in the day, Molly Hatchet. God, this goes back. I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say. I think 20 <laughs> years. I saw him at a local club uh, in Huntington out there on Long Island, and the lead singer was just a kid. And I'm like, and then yeah. they had some of the old dudes left. But now you're saying there's no original members? I don't think so, yeah. Can you name any, Mo I don't know any Molly Hatchard at I all. Oh, dude, they they got a lot of jams. I just remember you they know, were... And go back, don't forget that article, because Sully continues, uh, yeah. Trash and Nikki Six. <laughs> it's really good stuff, but you, you know Molly Hatch if you heard it, Jimmy. That's I'm sure, sure I did. I remember that from high school, but I mean, I just don't... That song about oh, Skinner, yeah. that they, they had a rock beef song, right, with Skinner, <clears throat> where he's like, $500 to get your head blown off. Yeah, well, oh, flirting, wow. flirting with Disaster was their big hit. Yeah. Uh, and Don't Be Late for That Flight, that was a song. <laughs> They didn't, have, they didn't really have a lot of radio yeah. hits, if you think about it. Our guitar player, Frank, was talking with them because he lives in Florida, and they, I guess they were like hanging out after that or whatever. But they still, you know, the, 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 the catalog is deep. They still can get on a lot of big festivals. The name carries, I mean... Well, they had a great cover. That album cover was fucking yeah. amazing. It's an icon. It's like Boston. Yeah. It's like one of those iconic album covers. It's like Conan the Barbarian or yeah. something, right? Yeah, riding a fucking <laughs> a beast. Eric, hit the greatest hits. I'm trying to remember all their radio hits. That's where I am with Molly Hatchet. Uh, you went with the live. No, oh, go with the rock. The other one. Greatest hits, you. 1990. Up. <laughs> right there, yeah. What were their, what were their radio hits? Uh, how about go to the tracks? There you no, go. what are you doing, you rock? Uh... Yeah, not a lot of this was played on the radio. But not, you know who's the best? Lot. The best one we played with last summer, we played with Blue Oyster Call. I got to give Eric a oh, shout out. I saw him at JFK. Nice. He, he's the best. Eric Eric Burning Blue. for you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and our guitar player, Frank, got to jam with them in Florida. That's they called cool. them up when they were down there. Right. Because, you know, they do like weekend gigs. They're still huge. Yeah. They, Are they still big? Yeah, yeah. They still get a crowd. Um,. And they'll do like, they'll play like the fair, they'll play like the rib cook off, and they'll pack the place. I said it years ago, we used to talk about this on the radio show, that uh, these bands, eventually, all the original members will die out, but the name will continue and do very, very well. Leonard Skinner's down to, I think they might be a band that is officially done as far as all of all original members. I think. They might have one left, but they're still doing it. Obviously, ACDC, you know the problem they're having, but that, that name and that band will go on way past the original members. Kiss has done that shit, yeah. obviously. And, uh, and we're going to have a changing of the guard soon. I mean, we're already seeing it in Europe, like where certain bands that, have not, that are now getting up there in age, maybe this will be the last year they'll do the festivals, but it's great for all us, like the Hate Breeds, the Lamb of Gods, the 
Avenged Sevenfolds. Like we do festivals with Aerosmith, with Judas but, Priest, with Kiss. But you guys are ready to move up. Yeah, and we're we'll, ready to t take one more step up that ladder. Yeah, we we did direct support to Kiss in Belgium, like probably 2009. And the, the great thing about those old school rock acts is no one's gonna upstage them. Yeah. So they'll let you bring your pyro. They'll let you hang two backdrops and and have lights and CO2 jets, and they don't care because you're no one's gonna upstage Kiss. Like yeah, who, sure. if anybody maybe Slipknot or maybe you know Metallica or something. Yeah. But even then, Kiss I think would support Metallica. At this Go point. back to the Sully thing, uh, the Sully article because he continues from the. J Jamie Jasta podcast. Uh, then he continues, I don't know what his deal is, man, talking about Nikki Six, but I could just tell you that he is the most, I don't even know what the word is for it. I've never met anyone like that. He's just so pompous and egotistical and egotistical, and he feels like he's still on top of the world. He just thinks he's so relevant, and he's just an old, fat, washed-up has-been. He annoys me, and I don't even deal with it anymore. It's lame. But see, I don't know how true the, the, the washed-up thing is, because his other band, 6AM, I think they have like probably a top-10 radio hit right now. Maybe even, it could even be top-5 by now. Yeah, that's pretty um, cool. Uh, Jamie Jassip from Hatebreed is in studio, and uh, wow, this is, hey, Amy, what's up? Amy Schumer. And then, uh, you guys talking about Colin Quinn. <laughs> that is hurtful, and he is our friend, however accurate that description may be. A lovely man. Very nice. Uh, wait, so, so wait, let me see if this is Colin Quinn. So he thinks he's so relevant, and he's just an old fat one. Yes, yes. Hey Amy, can you bloated? can you give me a recommendation on that dating site where I, that, that the secret one? Can you? I try to. You what know, mean I, the secret I, one? I put her name in. Yeah, to, it's called We're Not Just a <laughs> Ball Anymore. Dot <laughs> org. <laughs> I put her name in as like the referral, and it didn't work. That's such garbage. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my name doesn't really hold the, the weight it used to, <laughs> even though I am now a plus size model. Oh yeah, no, you're getting a lot of heat for that. For what Glamour I'm, magazine? Yeah, what the fuck? Glamour. Glamour. Um, well, as someone who is both a 34-year-old woman and also uh, a beached whale, I was um, a little confused why I was mentioned. Um, but, uh, yeah, Rachel and I, we wanted to come out and say that we are living together. We are. We, um, Rachel Feinstein and I have moved in together. And we're not ashamed of that. No, we give each other sponge baths every night because we're <laughs> worth it. Yeah, we are worth it. And when Rachel misses something, I wash it. And we're very excited. And Rachel's coming to the Denver Comedy Works this weekend. And have you I, done Have you done that gig before or no? That's my first time. Yeah, the, it's okay at the downtown location. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I hear it's a great okay. place. Oh, good, awesome. Yeah, I hear it's really good. I think. What have you guys heard about the Sam Tander? arena in Reading, Pennsylvania, <laughs> or the Bryce Jordan Center in University Park, Pennsylvania. I hear they're dynamite places, and yeah. you should get to... <laughs> I've heard nothing but positive things about those arenas, to be honest it's with you. The Mohegan Sun in Wilkes Bar, the Mohegan Sun, it's not just for Connecticut anymore. That's right. <laughs> well, Wilkes, Wilkes Bar, Wilkes Bar is, is re it's a, really a new hotbed of entertainment. It's a, ha it's a happening yes. place. It's uh, up and coming, yeah. Yes. Is there a lot of industry there? Because I am looking to get discovered. Absolutely. I'm going there to audition on New Year's Eve. It's a great place. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, so this this glamour thing, they, they came out and said you were plus size, and it's like you're not even close to the size that they would consider that. So are they just trying to shoehorn like a celebrity name in there? What are they doing? I don't know, but I was like, what? the fact that they didn't tell me is what was shady. Like, and they knew it was shady. Like, if I'm going to now be considered plus size, like, you got to sit a girl down, <laughs> give her several cheesesteaks, and let her know her new classification. Um, but I just, you know, it's like, I, I know what I look like naked, and it's, it's fine. Um, but I think for, like, younger women to see that and be like, oh, her body's problematic? Uh, well, then I'm like a tank, you know? Like, I think, I think it's not a good message. Yeah, uh, they're, they're trying to shrink plus size for some reason to be even smaller. So, like, if you're, if you're not, like, what, a size zero or two, you're considered uh, overweight? I think they were just... Yeah. I, I think they were just using uh, Amy Schumer to get a little fucking heat for their I, article. Probably, this yeah. What this is all about. They want women to disappear. Like, they're just like, when can you guys just be head some yeah. dick? They and want everybody. <laughs> yeah. Why are you guys living That's together? That's why Rachel and I moved in together, because we weigh each other every morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You put your head on a scale, and the other one sits on the face, and you just <laughs> subtract the difference, subtract the head. <laughs> this is what I'm pitching 
seeing her. Um, are you a, are you a, on the road this weekend, Jimmy? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I got. Uh, I'm in Connecticut, and I got Vermont and uh, another gig in uh, Northampton, Massachusetts. Oh, wow, all the places where gay marriage is legal. What a coincidence! <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I'm making. I'm making an announcement soon. Believe me, Bob Kelly called me out the other day, and I'm like, all right, it's time to stop pretending. <laughs> 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 hey, also, you guys, Rachel's special. Um, only whores wear purple. Is going to be on Comedy Central on April 23rd. Oh, wonderful! That, that's why. Why that name, Rachel? It's a phenomenal name. Well, that's what I had a babysitter that told me that when I was a kid. She told me that only whores wear purple. She also told me that um, only whores carry suitcases. Which is true. <laughs> wow, she had really, really weird things for what a whore does. Only whores oh. like Prince. You know, the whole purpose. Like, okay. <laughs> you know the earring thing, yeah. right? Yes. yes. The bigger the hoop, the bigger the hoe. Really? really? Yes. Yeah. That's true. Is that a real thing going on now? Yeah. Dang. Besides the suitcases and the yeah. wearing purple. Well, she said in the suitcases they had, like, little things to bathe, to take whores baths with. She said they had creams and rinses to cover their godless whoring in the, in the suitcases. Well, what that's what a bizarre message. <laughs> How old were you? <laughs> right. I was like ten. It was so funny. Oh, nice. And wh when did she say that? Well, she walked in. I was fucking her boyfriend in my purple underwear. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have to fuck a guy off and not get a present Are you upset? Wasn't that the title of the next hate read album? <laughs> <laughs> So, so all right. So, your special is called "Only Whores Wear Purple," and you're at the Denver Comedy Works this what third? Yeah, that's great. And Nikki Glaser's special is this Friday. Yeah. Wow. Very good. Yeah, Nikki turned us on to that. Uh, what's it called? The the slow. Yeah. ASMR is that what it is? Yes. <laughs> Are you guys still up from last night? Did you not go to bed? I know. I know. I don't know. Exactly. There's a, there's a fucking there's two bottles of whiskey and six ruined cucumbers now on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> they're ruined. I say they ruined. <laughs> so, do you do you guys listen to that AM? She does that AM, ASMR, ASMR, which is that calm talking, which like lulls you into yeah, like a state of relaxation. And she's like obsessed with it. She gets that tingling yeah. in, her, in her spine. I did one last night. What? Right. I did like a meditation thing last night on YouTube that it's like hypnotiz it what is it? Hypnotizing and meditating at the same time. It's like a hybrid. Nice. Yeah, hypnotizing. Are you sober? <laughs> Are you like a sober person? I am, yes. Oh, okay. That's what happens to sober people. They're just like they look to feel good like again. <laughs> They're like, How can I feel joy for even one minute? <laughs> <laughs> poor Jamie. Did you at least jerk off at the end of it? No, no, no. That'll, that'll get you all relaxed and ready for bed. All That's right. true. Rachel and I are gonna go lick each other. Bye you guys. Oh, wait, wait, right. before you what? go, how how's Keith? I saw the photo you guys tweeted of Keith. How uh were you or whatever or Instagram? Still black and now he's in a cane, which we I feel like he always was. We gotta get Amy Brutal on a track. We gotta get you on a hate breed track. Get you brutal in the pit. I I I love hate breed. Mark O'Connell, my friend, is taking back Sunday. We grew. I, I love hate breed. Oh yeah. We we. Yeah. we See, she's down. She's down for the core. Yes, she is. I'm down. Also, Keith has a special coming out too. It's um, it's uh, called Winding Down on the Porch. <laughs> God, fucking Keith. Oh, that's great. Keith is gonna die sitting in a folding chair with a mint julep in his hand and a big hat, fucking with a little swirl. <laughs> <laughs> Hobbling your way into comedy 101. Mm. All right, so uh, check Amy's site for her dates, and then check uh, Rachel out at the, at the comedy uh, works in Denver. In She's Denver hilarious, and it's a really, really good club. Nice. I'll see you guys. All right. All right. Thank All right you bye. So much. Uh, bye. Bye. Amy Schumer and Rachel Feinstein. That's a nice surprise. Yeah. Um, so uh, why don't we take a break? Right. Yeah. We're here looking at Sully shirtless, crying like a bitch. Oh, is this the part bastard. that's about Nikki Six? We can play the whole fucking song. Yeah. This is a great song. Did you find the uh, Nikki Six part? Or no. Well, well, what are we looking for? No, I don't know. I thought Iraq was. Oh no, we'll just play the whole song. Uh, Godsmack, uh, "Crying Like a Bitch" is a really good song, no matter what. And now that I know it's about Nikki Six, it makes it even that much better. Uh, Jamie Justin, what's the big plug before we take a break here? The new album comes out tonight. Uh, the single comes out tonight at single. midnight AD, and then the album's coming out May 13th, and there's a couple VIPs left at HateBreedVIP.com. Tour starts May 13th in Cleveland. And it's JamieJasta.com for all your HateBreed and Jamie uh, stuff, and uh, Jamie Jasta on uh, Twitter. And yes, Jimmy's sir. hitting the road. Yeah, Vermont, Saturday. Um, I should probably start with Connecticut tonight, uh, Richfield Playhouse. Tomorrow, Northampton, Mass., and um, the uh, Vermont... Uh, 
on Higher Saturday. Ground? Where is Burlington? Yeah, Burlington, or South Burlington. I don't know the name of the place. Go to jimmorton.com for tickets. But uh, I'm actually looking forward to these gigs because I have never done um, Northampton, Mass. Or Vermont, I've never done a gig. Yeah. So it's nice to just be getting to new places. Nice. That's great. And uh, this week's Opie Radio podcast on the old iTunes especially, Aaron Paul returns. He was great. I liked Aaron Paul a lot. And uh, Sex Robots with Tom Papa and Mark Normand. And Miles uh, Davis's friends with Chip Chipperson, all on this week's OP Radio podcast. Oh, Subscribe that. and review on iTunes, and we'll uh, tweet and Facebook uh, all the 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 the, 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 the link for everybody. Okay. Yep. Uh, when we get back, we have a woman that fed her husband to a dog. That's the tease. Oh. But first, it's uh, God Godsmack crying like a bitch. Jamie Justin Studio. Jim Norton hitting the road. Yeah. In a little while. Yes, sir. Going to my home state tonight. We've got Sam Rockwell outside the studio. Let's bring him in. Yep. Mr. Wright in theaters, on demand, and digital HD starting tomorrow. He's looking out. Choke, I think it was called. He's oh, yeah, yeah, I did hear that. I, I was, that was good. He, uh, he? Oh, he's punching he, Rowan on the throat. All right, good. <laughs> he was looking out the window. Okay. I understand. Here comes Sam Rockwell. Good morning, Hi, Sam. Man. How you doing, man? Oh, nice see you. you too, buddy. What's going on, what's Sam Rockwell? What's up, Sam? Hey, what's up? What's up, dude? What's what's happening? Jamie Josta from Hate Breed. Yeah. I uh, I saw you. Yeah. I saw you enjoying the view outside the. Oh uh, uh, yeah, check. Just uh, yeah, getting a little moment. You could uh, you could see it's Times right. Square. You could see yeah, where yeah, they dropped the nice ball. View. Thanks. Yeah. Not bad, right? Yeah, man. You're funny as fuck, dude. Oh, you're, thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. You're funny as hell. Thank you, buddy. Um, yeah, yeah. You know. It's nice to get up high and look at stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. There is something yeah. about being in a high window. It's just like looking out the window. It's just I like looking yeah. down on things. Are you yeah. afraid of heights? I'm terrified. Yeah, I guess I am. I, I, I definitely flying's affected me differently recently. But yeah, why? I don't know. It just, just has. It started freaking you out a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm better now. I had like a phase where it was freaking me out. Now I'm better, but yeah. What what freaks you out about it? It was nine eleven or some shit. Oh right? yeah, oh, well, that's that's a while ago now. Yeah. It's funny. I was I used to be afraid to fly. I thought it was going to hurt my career because I was like I, yeah. I won't get on a plane. And then the first big flight I take is to Denver, and we have an emergency landing yeah. because there's a problem with the fuel transfer. So they have to dump fuel out of the wings. But after yeah. that, I'm like that'll never happen again. I made it. That's intense. Oh, that's yeah. how you. Yeah. That's how you look at it. I'm like, what are the odds of having two yeah. you know problems on a plane? It just doesn't I happen. I guess you're yeah, right. Yeah, Travis yeah, yeah, Barker that's said that's that. Good point. Too. That's a good point. Oh, he had Who more than that? one. Travis Barker, remember? He oh, was yeah? lucky to be alive. He was in a crash. Burned up. That freaked me out. After that, I Burned was Burned like, up, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he, yeah. The drummer from the bad one. Eighty two. That was scary. What can him fuck up his flying now? I now know. he has to take gonna... the bus everywhere. Because we were on a tour with them in Australia, and they were, he was going to take the boat there. To Australia, wow. you could do like... Then he three... Titanic, and he was like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was going to take like a... a boat to Australia? <laughs> it's like a three-week boat. It's like a cruise. But I was in a disengaged landing once, and after that, I said, I'll That's be it. safe from here on in. They literally, in, really? in Charlotte, it just went straight up because they were going to hit. So they oh had to disengage God. the landing because they, they were going to go off the runway, and we went literally straight. Oh, Holy that happened to me shit. once, too. Yeah, in That's Vegas. That's terrifying. Yeah. I, spilled, I was sitting next to this flight attendant who was flying with us. She was really hot, and we're flirting, and we start going back up again. I, think, I said, I think we're taking back off. She goes, no, we're not. I'm like, yeah, we are. And then I spilled my cereal on her. I was so <laughs> humiliated because I thought I was doing you going great. up like that? Not, not, not straight up. Like, yeah, yeah, just kind of like on a little bit of an I angle. you're eating oh. cereal while you're landing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had a little bit of bowl of the cereal, and I spilled it on her blanket, and she had to play it off like oh that's okay as you're flirting with your eating cereal <laughs> yeah. just milk jim norton is a <laughs> it's a class act so you uh this is you you uh what did you do for a private detective i thought that was pretty fascinating oh yeah that was one of the many jobs along with a lot of restaurant jobs busing tables delivering burritos but yeah i was an intern for a private investigator who, who never paid me by the way <laughs> i met i met this guy in acting class who was you know like doing covert stuff and I saw him in a restaurant, he was being all covert, and I was like, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? He was like, I'm working for this private investigator, and, and then I worked with him, and we tracked some girl who was having an, an affair. And was she actually having an affair? Sleazy. She was, and we, we filmed, it was really sleazy. Did you get, you, I drove you the filmed car. the actual sex? Yeah, I drove the car where he he filmed it, and then, then I held the camera, and <laughs> you know, I got paid like I don't know, 50 bucks. <laughs> 
Did you actually go up to the car? That was the most exciting thing that happened, by the way. That's still pretty awesome. That is awesome. It was like going to the library to look up something, and, you know, it's all this boring stuff. But, you know, it's sleazy, but in a way, what she was doing was sleazy, too. So you could have actually been helping a nice guy out. There you go. If you're tracking someone for That's a good way to think of it. I thought carbon copy. Yeah, you were helping them. Did you have any of those where they're out on a back injury and you had to go to the bowling alley to, to film them bowling or anything? No, no, but <laughs> that's part of that you know, job, too. That would have been yeah. more exciting than a lot of the crap I did for this guy. Oh, the disability guys. Who, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't work fraud. anymore. And yeah. they're playing yeah. golf every day. And you know. yeah. How long did you do that for? I just did it for a couple of months and off and on. And I have to just do random things, though. It was very strange. Just making ends meet when you were first starting? Yeah, I was in, I was studying acting, and I would do, you know, bar back busting tables and stuff like that you know there's a weird story that who was it that told this i think de niro told this story yeah. of uh, he was a, a waiter or something yeah and uh at the premiere for midnight cowboy uh he was dustin hoffman's server get out yeah, no. they, yeah really they, yeah they like there was some weird moment I thought he was already oh, that's wild no midnight cowboy is 69 de niro yeah, you're right how about the you're right how about the people out there that have no idea that de niro was their waiter that's true. There's got to be a Incredible. whole bunch of people that have no it's fucking amazing. idea that, that he actually waited on. I gave bread to Madonna him. once. And Did Russell you really? Russell Simmons, yeah, at yeah. the Time Cafe. You remember the Time Cafe? I remember the... You remember was the, that on West, on West 42nd or something? It was, no, it was uh, uh, Bond or 4th Street in Lafayette. I couldn't have been more off. <laughs> you know, but wait, hey, was that on 42nd Street? No, it was in London. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it's am I dumb? Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it, but it was a place that all these hipsters used to go to, and now it's like a Chinese restaurant, oh. but... But Denzel Washington, Madonna, and I used to give bread to all these people. Mm. So you, were they were they uh, friendly or were they unfriendly customers? They, everybody was pretty good, you know. Everybody was pretty good. Can I uh, can I just say one thing? Sure. Uh, we're friends with Bill Burr. Oh, you know Bill it's great, really well, man. and you're Vic. Yeah, dude. We, I, I'm so lucky to be in that thing. Was it, was that a great experience? Great, great. We're doing a season two. Oh, good. good. I don't yeah, know if it was announced that he's doing a season two. No, maybe I'm. That's all right. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> well, you, Hello. No, I, you got um, to assume. assume that he is, though, because it got yeah. so well received. Everybody loved it. It's like, yeah. it was, it's not surprising. No, you, so you guys know Bill. He's the, oh, he's yeah. The really best. well. Yeah, he's the best, man. He's awesome. Cracks me up. But you guys don't tape that together, right? You tape it totally. We actually, we did actually a couple times. Me and Bill would tape it together. Um, and that was really fun. That was really fun because mm -hmm. then you get to play. Yeah, it yeah. helps a little bit to be in the same room. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you've done those, right? Yeah. I've done I've done voiceover stuff, and yeah. I did an animation on a much lower level where everyone was taped separately. Yeah, and it seems like you know they was like, no, you always got to do everybody separately. But it seems like together is a better way to it's do better. it. It's better, and I just did one with David Tell too, and Jeffrey Tambor, and uh, we had these glass booths. So we were completely contained, but we could see the other person. Right. So you're often. in the glass booth, and I'm. But we so we could overlap dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, so we could ad lib much easier and not, you know, fuck up the take because uh, we were enclosed. It was really cool. Jamie Jesse, yes, that. that's who he played. <laughs> <laughs> that's who he played. I wish I was built like that guy. <laughs> I gotta watch. That's this. Vic the like Madonna's this guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. F is for Family was great. It's uh, it's on Netflix for the people who haven't checked it out yet. It it was a quick, I think, eight episodes or something. Yeah, I, I ran through that in like it's, a, it's half fun. a day. I'm like, oh, Bill, I need more. <laughs> and he said something like that. He's like, yeah, I it's, I spent years getting this together, and you could just digest the whole thing in one day yeah it's yeah nuts yeah. but then that makes people it's, want more it's like if they watch the whole season and all of a sudden it's like okay now like there's no there's no time to like really like it's like you want you see it all and then you're like fuck i want more so i think you have a better shot at getting a season two or something like that yeah maybe you're right i'm into peaky blinders have you guys, you guys seen peaky Blinders? no i want to see that. another really person good. talking about this show what is it great show man it's gangster show but english gangster oh yeah yeah i wanted to see that it's oh, on netflix great. someone else tur uh, turned us on to that recently yeah. is it a real person they got you know, I think it's based on a real gang in Northern England, and they had they had razor blades in their hats. They would pull the hats out, and they just go, whoosh, and they'd slit somebody's you know throat. With what that. is a Peaky Blinder? Like, is that no, the meaning? Good question. I, I'm not quite sure where they get that title. Well, we're gonna but find out. We're gonna they drink a lot of whiskey and they smoke a lot of cigarettes and they kill people with razor blades. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's <laughs> an awful thing to get killed by too—a razor. Yeah, that's a nasty right? death. Ugh, I, I heard that hookers, certain hookers. Um, oh, they, I know what it is. Peaky, they blind people with the razor blades. Oh, it so is. Okay, peaky blinders. Peaky blinders. Um, 
And a peaky must be the way they sneak it out or something. Now I'm just guess- I'm taking what <laughs> yeah, he said yeah, as a that's fact, what it is. and I'm just guessing because peaky like means Cockney it. slang. You know, like you're yeah. peeking out of your eyeballs, and I don't know. Yeah, I heard certain uh, hookers would carry razors dipped in garlic because or soaked in garlic because in their, they said the garlic in their vagina. No, no, well, the, not these, not not these good eggs. They didn't. There'd be no possibility of these prostitutes doing that. Not the ones I was getting. No. What is the garlic? Vagina. That's cute. Uh, what does the garlic do? Uh, I don't know. I heard it got into your bloodstream though, and, and like the, the garlic, they're like, yeah, be so careful. They, they would just do that if you fucked with them. But I mean, uh, what happens if you get the garlic in your bloodstream? Yeah. Don't know, but through a razor, it's supposedly a, a problem. Somebody might know wow. better. Well, now we gotta look that up. I think I had yeah. a new bunch of cop come. Never heard look of that. Look, I know. Look up garlic in your blood. We need to know what could happen to us. I would, I would I mean, like to know. Vampire, you ever go on WebMD? Bad. That's a fun afternoon. <laughs> <Good start. laughs> oil lethal. Web MD. You haven't gone on WebMD with one stupid thing that's happening with you, and, and it all leads Oh, yeah, to... all the time. No, no, what, least, is, what is uh, WebMD? What is that? Uh, you know you what? Maybe put your I... symptoms in, and, oh, and then I'll tell oh, you your horrible. options. That's terrible. You'll never... Uh, yeah, no, you don't want to do that ever. It all leads to death. <laughs> it's all... It's horrible. It's a pyramid that right? all leads to death. Yeah, no matter what it is, because every symptom connects to something else. Yeah, yeah. So, are you feeling a little fluish or yeah. whatever? Oh, yeah, well, it could be... I had a lousy, itchy eye. Next thing you know, you know... Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm looking at my yeah, demise. Yes. Like, Next thing you know, you're getting gender reassignment surgery. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Is that possible? What, uh, uh, we, we now <laughs> know it's ineffective for that purpose. What, what are we learning here, Eric? Sorry. It doesn't mean Putting certain Putting garlic death. in your bloodstream is uh, ineffective. It doesn't mean certain death. Okay, maybe that was just a rumor, right. that, but they would put their razors in it. That there was something it sounds to good to me, if you're but, a vampire. But the sentence says, doesn't mean certain death. That means it Hello. could still happen. Well, anything in your bloodstream would probably... I understand that, Eric. You played I a do. sex addict. What was the name of that film? I did not yeah. see it, but I heard great things about it. Yeah, it's funny. Chuck Palahniuk, who did Fight Club, wrote the book yeah. Fight Club, um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's a fun movie. Clark Gregg directed. He's an actor and a great actor. And, uh, yeah, it's a fun... Uh, Choke, right? Yeah, Angelica Houston. Really, really cool. It was a uh, story. The, yeah, the movie was really good. I, 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 I used to read all his books. I slowed down. I, I'm, yeah, I, I got to catch he's up. But he's, he's a, a cool great guy. author. He, he's yoked too. He he lives upstate with his boyfriend. They they. I said, "What do you do? You're so you know you fit." And he says, "I, I build bridges with uh, stone." And he built. He literally wow builds. And it's in one of the. It's in Choke actually. This guy builds a, mm-hmm. a wall with stones. And he and does that how, in real life. That's his workout. And it works, man. The guy's like, you know, he's like a brick house. I don't remember. It's funny. We've had him in, and I don't remember him. But I think he had a sweater on when he was in, so you yeah. couldn't tell. Yeah. Um, so the guy's jacked. Yeah, that's the guy you don't want to fuck with, too. The guy yeah. who looks unassuming in a sweater. You know, <laughs> shit. <laughs> those things with rocks as his fist is getting your head. <laughs> so in Choke, was, this is a serious movie about a, a sex addict. And yes. Yes. That, yes. do you have serious and a little bit of comedy, but yeah, yeah okay, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. How do you research something like that? Because everyone, people are like, oh, you can't be a sex, addict, but you know, it yeah. is a real thing. It is a real thing, and it's more like a food disorder than like a yeah. alcoholism. Uh, they're filling a void. You know, I I went to a few meetings and met some counselors and you know all that stuff, and it's a great documentary. But they everything is about. Uh, sex. So if they're angry, they have sex. If they're happy, they're celebrating, they have sex. It's, everything's associated with sex. Yeah, it is like food, too, because you can't be abstinent. Like, you know, everything else you can be abstinent, but with that, it's like, yeah. you have a healthy dose, and that's the hard part. Yes, one. exactly. Yeah. Jimmy uh, might suffer from that. Well, People yeah, yeah, always but, laugh but, about it. Look, oh, yeah. Like it's, oh, yeah, you're a sex addict. It will be, you know, yeah, what a you, hard life. But Computers I know. haven't helped either. Computers are not Musicians. Yeah. To just yeah. A lot of them. It's, it's, it can get dark. Yeah. That, w- with musicians, you see a lot of them on the road because oh, it's so yeah. easy. You just Accessible. go on. Yeah, it's, it's there every day, every night. Oh, it's boy, so yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. then you see some guys go down a real dark path with it. Did yeah, you see sure. people hooking up at the meetings? No, but I could imagine that happening. They had the, the, the meetings that ladies go to is, are called love and sex. S L A A. Yeah, yeah. And Sex that's, love action. That's where the ladies go. So that's where you'd go to pick up chicks. Yeah. You just wait outside in the corner. Yeah. When they go off with their cigarettes. It's frowned upon. Of course it is. <laughs> but you know what it is. Says you. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that movie, uh, Moon. Oh, that was thanks, great. man. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah, wow. that's a brain fuck, that movie. Yeah, it really yeah. was. We don't want to give away the ending, but yeah, it, yeah, it was we had a, fun. It was a little bit we of a. We referenced a Midnight shock. Cowboy uh, for that, actually, a lot. And Dead Ringers. With Jeremy Irons. Yeah. What did you? How did you reference Ben and Cowboy? Well, uh, my acting coach told me to watch it because it was essentially a buddy. When you think about it, it's a buddy movie. Even though it's about clones, it's kind of a buddy movie. So, um, if you look at all the great buddy movies, you know, Midnight Cowboy, 
uh, Midnight Run, you know. Yeah. But uh, Dead Ringers is when I, the best time I've seen that trick done where Jeremy Irons played twins. Mm -hmm. Although they, this, this woman on, uh, what's it called? The TV show Orphan Black. I don't know. She okay, apparently yeah. is fantastic, and I just saw Tom Hardy in Legend. He was really good doing that, played the Cray Twins. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun trick. Uh, it's funny, I was just reading about Midnight Cowboy, too. The guy who sang the, the uh, I forget his name, he wrote the song. Everybody's talking, an uh, awesome song. Yeah. The hell he got out of music in like in the early 70s to open a dolphin sanctuary. Jesus. It's amazing how it was. Or some weird thing with dolphins he wanted to do. I don't know oh, if he was shit. a singer. I think someone Nielsen sang it, so he might have been the writer. Wow. He wow. wanted to save dolphins. 40 wow. minute opening song. I mean, it's the longest opening song in history. It's it like is. Fucking it is. end crawl is still opening. But it's like, it just worked. <laughs> Such an <laughs> underrated movie. Oh, it's great. You know, won the, the Oscar. Best. People don't talk about it in the same vibe as they do, like The Godfather or mm. yeah. whatever. What is your movie that you're promoting now? We want to promote it properly. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright is the movie. Anna Kendrick and I. Oh, and, she's uh, great. Riz is in it. Bunch of people. Ansel, uh, Anson Mount, and uh, all kinds of all kinds of fun folks. And what, 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 what is it about? It's like an action comedy rom, rom com. Okay. It's like kind of like Gross Point Blank. It's. Uh, that's that's what it aims to be. It's a it's a it's a fun kind of, you know, killer kill people and kiss right. movie. Do you like <laughs> do you like watching your stuff? Like you go to the premiere, are you always comfortable, or do you just do it because you absolutely have to do it? Sometimes, you know. Sometimes, if you it's you know, I feel like if you know if it's a bad note, you know, like if you're a musician or or, or maybe if it's a bad joke or something, you know, like ah, that didn't quite land or. You know what I mean? I think you kind of go, ah. But then if, if something lands, you're like, oh, that's pretty good. I went to a comedy premiere where it was bombing horribly. It wasn't my movie. Yeah. I just went, and it was like, oof. And it's like if the, if the premiere audience doesn't laugh, it's bad. Because they're they're, they usually yeah. know the performers or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. Right. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, it was not oh, good. God. I was loving it. As a comic, there's nothing better than just watching something tank in front of an you audience. Love but I'm not involved with it. <laughs> Did you have any scenes with the RZA? Yes, Riz is awesome. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of cool shit together. Yeah. yeah Did you ask him about the album? Uh, yeah, uh, the, Martin uh, Screlly or whatever his name yeah, is. The, the guy bought the album the for one, two million dollars. One has copy. The only copy. The Wu Tang album. The new Wu Tang. Oh. They gave it to one yeah, guy. That's right. And it, it ended up being a guy who I guess is, is there's a all this controversy. The about worst him. guy. The I don't pharmacy know, guy who raised the AIDS drug price. Martin Shkreli, you know who he is? He, there, was a, there was an AIDS drug that was selling very cheap. And, oh, what, that guy, of course. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And he hiked the price. To, like by like 700%. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he bought the, I got it. The I one who made like a diss tape supposedly dissing Ghostface. And now, and then it became a whole online thing and it went viral. I got I got It was obviously a joke between them. It was What's terrible. That? It was a no, terrible tape. No, I don't tape. think it was a joke. Uh -huh. It didn't seem like oh, that. It, it, across, it, was, it came across a little hacky. It was so yeah. awful. Yeah. That's going to make a good movie, that guy. That guy's a scumbag story. I want to find redeeming the quality, and I'm like, story. are we wrong? Because you know how they clickbait, like you said, clear, you, you do it, and it's like, oh, that was wrong. This was bullshit. That that wasn't what it really was. But I watched an interview with him. I'm like, no, it wasn't wrong. That That is what it was. He was yeah. just a creep. He's pretty yeah. hateable, yeah. was yeah. it? Yeah, just yeah, like a yeah, fucking yeah. hedge fund guy. Like, ugh. Yeah. I feel like Riz yeah. is real underrated, though, as like an actor and director and stuff. He's he so like cool, he's... dude. He's one of the coolest people. He's like rich, isn't he? He's like a, like a rich, rich motherfucker. Oh yeah, he, from all the production. You never know. I mean, he's such a cool, like, laid-back guy. He's such a nice guy, very humble guy. We yeah, we talked to him. I don't remember what we spoke about. What was he promoting? Do you have any re he recollection? Was, he so was telling cool jokes. Remember, he was telling us some yeah. jokes. He was, was trying he? out jokes on us. Yeah, he when was. He, yeah. He's, he's a cool guy. He was all right. We were in the like the side room at the Grammys, you know, because when metal. Uh, gets nominated, you don't get the the televised. Part. Yeah. So you got to be in like the side room down the street, and he rolls up with with Quentin Tarantino, and ple people are going crazy. That's awesome. I think maybe he might have been nominated for uh, like scoring a film, or I don't know something that yeah. would be in that side room, and like you you see like famous people really having a fanboy freak out on RZA. Like dudes wanted to go talk to him. Like yeah, that's no pretty cool. People. Like, yeah, he's super he's cool, just man. Really, uh, mag what is magnetic personality? That's that's so weird. The side room, and it sounds like yeah. this yeah. down the street. Oh yeah, we we did a show with him in France. We we're like, that looks like most deaf. Like, yeah. and the crowd was going crazy. Yeah, most uh, very charming, but, but yeah. he, he wasn't under most deaf. Oh, His that's right. He's got the new name now. Yasin yeah. 
But Bay or Blay? Yeah, yeah, is that something his like real that. name he's using? Something like that. I don't know, but it was talk about a strange pair up, Hate Breed and Yasin Bay in France in the middle of the woods. And the show was awesome. They those sometimes those shows work overseas. Like I know in, in Korea, South Korea, the headline Ozzy headlined it and then before him was Psy. Like yeah. the, it was this weird combination of music that they just they go for. They don't mind these, you know, genres crossing. But yeah. he's he's not allowed back in the country. Did you hear about this? They're holding oh, that's him right. hostage yes. in South Africa. Wait, what happened? He didn't pay. What, what happened? I don't know Passports what happened. We got we, we should something? look that up. But we just went and yeah. played. We played South Africa last year, and we had heard about it that they won't let him leave because they think he had some involvement or something. I don't. I don't want to. So he's still sure. over there. Yeah. I don't think he can get back into America. Does he have to pay? T oh, he can't get into America, or he can't get out of there. I don't know. Yeah, what was we, it? Was it a? It was a we're, we're looking passport this up. thing. Uh, I don't know. Over passport. Faces charges. Yeah. In South Africa, uh, over uh -huh. passport. Yeah, yeah, yeah passport. Uh, a U.S. Okay. rapper appear in court and travel document to identify bearers as human beings. Uh, I don't know what that means. I don't, I don't know. Is he making means. a political statement about something? Is that what it is? I'm not I couldn't sure. sound like a less informed <laughs> asshole. <laughs> but he was guessing at what it could be. <laughs> he's a great actor too. Like he I saw a great. movie with him Monsters and Bruce Ball. Willis. Yeah, yeah, he's that great. We worked together. He's awesome. What'd I, you do with him? We did Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Nice. He's, he's great. He's a great guy. He's a really cool guy. Is there anything worse than being on set with somebody who's just a dick? I mean, it's just the worst. I've had very <laughs> few bad experiences because I've done very few things. That's the beauty of having a fucking <laughs> mediocre career. Not a lot of opportunity for bad moments. <laughs> he broke uh, South Africa's immigration laws. Okay. Uh, charged with using a false identity. Wow. Using an unrecognized travel document and helping his family stay in the country illegally. Jeez. You can't do that in another country. You can't wow. fuck around in another country. Around in the States. They hit you with that temperature gun, and if you're even a slightly over, you get pulled to the side and you're stuck. What's you the gotta, temperature gun? See if you're it's Ebola. Like, yeah. It's no joke. Oh, yeah. fuck. Oh, get the and fuck. Somebody right before us had some sort of strange animal or something, and they caught him. It was like feathers in a bag, and they they got rushed right into like Feathers in a bag? Yeah, because think about it. Oh, you go there. Think intense. about the stuff yeah. that you could try to get out of there. Right. I mean, we went, and we were in with lions. Actually, the next day, that, that lady got killed um in that lion park like literally right after we were there oh they said God. they said make sure the doors are locked and we said we're not going to go in the cars that we came oh is that when it jumped up into her window she had the window down for a photo yeah they know you, how to unlock crazy. the door oh, but we were at that God. same park and like the the big male lion i'm not kidding you he slapped away one of the cubs and this thing flew like 30 feet we thought he killed the the, the cub. cub i mean it's it's wow. wild. Yeah, yeah Africa's wow, weird wow, with wow. like disease. They have to worry about what's going in and out. I, mean, I didn't know they had a temperature gun, but I know that they were checking people when Ebola was. I happening. heard about the temperature Sandy. gun. What if you just have a slight little something going on? We were just, shook. We were like, what if oh, you just God, got out of the sauna? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah, or you're on a hot plate. What if you're on a yeah. like the flight where? Well, they must account for that. I mean, they, you know, they they must assume that. Like, if you're, you know, there must be Ebola temperature, and you know, the flight was uncomfortable. Hopefully. Yeah. How what was if you're David Africa? Hasselhoff and just hot blood? It, <laughs> <laughs> it was great. We played like a death metal festival and we were kind of like. Oh, uh, that's know, awesome. Yeah, but the crowd was great and it was a really good time. I mean, the, when you go to those parks and you see all that stuff up close, I mean, we there, there was a giraffe that was born like two days prior and the thing was already like eight feet tall. Crazy. It was, it was wild, yeah. Did you pet it? No, you couldn't. You, we did pet a cheetah and a. Um, and that they said. You gotta really scratch it hard. They said, "Don't like, you know, go light because it's gonna swat you." Or, or they don't like that. They want to be like, you gotta really rake it hard. Good. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. But did I ask a big? What a You're child's brave, question. It sounds did like you pet the giraffe. Oh, yeah. Forty-seven. <laughs> but that's what I asked on the radio. <laughs> but that story, it sounds like someone wanted you to be clawed. That doesn't make sense that you would go hard oh, instead of soft. There's definitely some people there that were working that thought it was funny when some people got a little roughed up. By well, they say, but this, the padding might, uh, it doesn't probably feel like a, an animal. They probably, probably want like a bug or something. Yeah, they want to get off. swatting it. Right. right. Get away from me. It's creepy or erotic touch. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want an erotic touch on an animal. I saw a video last night. This has nothing to do with Sam or the movie. I saw a video. <laughs> I was on a loop. I don't know how, I don't know how I got the cheetahs from scat porn, but you know, you just where you wind it up. Happens. And I was watching this, uh, this cheetah was laying while watching, not gazelles, but there's some other animal that leaps. I should have wrote this down. Antelope. Antelope. Uh, antelope. antelope. Not a puma, but it might have been an antelope. antelope. It was gazelle. A gazelle. No. Okay, I'm going gazelle.
but it just it leaps. Oh, I was watching it on. Uh, it wasn't on a YouTube loop. It was on um, Netflix. And this thing just like times out the jump, and it just jumps up and it grabs it in midair and snatches it down. And it's really it's great. A killing for, machine. He always called why animals go wild or something. And I'm like, this is going to be awful. But I was with a young lady, and she wanted to watch it. <laughs> and anything that would prevent her from leaving, I would have watched. <laughs> and it was like a feel good fun show. And then they showed this little baby rabbit, this little adorable rabbit that this family found, and the kids didn't want to let it go, but there was time to let it go. We healed it. They let it go, and they're videotaping it. It doesn't even make it across the yard no. before a fucking hawk swoops down and takes it. <laughs> Come on. I, I, and I always say I don't like a happy ending. I love a happy ending. I was like, what the fuck? I was so mad. <laughs> but they were basically showing this is what it's like. The, oh, the family was heartbroken. I, I got to see that Battle clip. of Kruger, right? No. No, what's that? The greatest the what? nature oh, yes, video yes, yes. ever. I have it's seen probably that. got like 400 million views by now. Yes. Bella that, Kruger. Yes. You have to see it. Yes. I don't want to give it away, but it's, it's Well, let's play it for him. How, how, how long is it? Play? It's too long to play. It's a doc? It's a documentary? No, it's, it's a video. It's, it's actual footage that uh, tourists caught. A baby wildebeest gets... Taken out. They're, the wildebeest are coming up. They don't see the lions. And the lions are waiting. And people are on the boat, like, in the water, like, oh, my God, they don't know. And uh, make a long story short, they, they get a baby. And I don't want to give it away. But it's they the get most, a human baby? No, a, a oh. wildebeest baby. Oh, God. But it is the most epic... We need somebody. If anybody's listening, you need to you need to edit in Cypress Hill. We ain't going out like that at the yeah. end of this into the wildebeest. Can we play just the end real fast? No, you don't. Yeah, you gotta watch the whole thing. You don't watch the end. No, you gotta watch the whole thing. If you've ever had a bad day, it's never as bad as what this baby wildebeest went through. <laughs> because after he gets mauled by the lion, they take him into the water, and then a crocodile tries to get him, and then the crocodile goes after the lions, and then. Will to be so like, hold on, let me go get 600 of my friends, and we'll, now we'll fuck you up yeah, for taking our kid. You, the, you'll have to just watch it. You'll you, never believe. I've never seen this before. You've, You've never, never seen saw this? No. Kruger? Yeah. Now watch. Now watch. The alligator's like, oh, wait, now you're in my territory? There's like three hold lions on. eating on the wildebeest. Right. They got oh, my it. God. Yeah. And this, um, where's the alligator now? And I now watch this. The I tell you, it reminds me of the business world. I don't know how you people feel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're just, they're really yeah, munching on this. I better about having that sausage this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Now, see, if you fast forward a little bit, you'll see the lion, the, the crocodile actually comes up and, and almost gets the lion, too. All right, the let me, go like, to at least the crocodile. The crocodile's like, I can't believe I've never cow. seen this. Oh my, I, I oh thought my you, God. no man. Yeah, look, look at the crocodile, look at, look at he's the like, the you see he's a half a little bit. Oh, for my God. But the, but the, it's amazing, it's a tug of war. And it lives. Get out of here. It lives, they come back with all their boys and they're like, Where's the kid? And they give You're him back. You're fucking kidding me. Wait, the wildebeest is all right at the end? Are you Dude, kidding me? Why was the you best? don't tell me the ending. They didn't see oh, that. I don't give a fuck. I, it's the best oh nature video God, ever I, recorded. I, I Look at this. I can't believe this. So this, this. That's insane. So the, now the, the, the crocodile or the alligator get Now watch, now watch this. Oh, hold on. Now cue Cypress Hill. We ain't going out like that. Yeah. Watch. All right. So, so, so now the... the, the the now family watch comes back. Yeah, they're like, hold on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No way. It's like a rumble. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then the world of beast is like, where Get did you go to like, begin we with? We came back with our posse, yo. Whole, the whole fucking boy. going up. Boy, boy, crazy boy. <laughs> and look at this. The and they're still back. eating Roll, the fucking baby. The they're like, like ten feet in the air. Watch this. You still want to? You still want to fuck with our kid? And they're like, give the baby back now. Well, the beasts are dopes. There's 80 of them. They're just kind of standing around. <laughs> uh, who's taking charge? This was not my idea. It's not my kid. <laughs> right. watch, watch, watch who's going to go first? Oh, this uh, is awesome. amazing. Watch this. They're like, come look, on. Look. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. They All just right. don't realize how uh, how powerful they are. Meanwhile, but do you think they're, they're, still they're still munching, munching out of the, the kid. Yeah. yeah. And this will of the beast is chasing one out of, out of frame. Incredible. You think the kid's... <laughs> Is, oh, oh wow. is Honey Badger don't give a shit gonna show up? This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good video. You think the kids like hurry the fuck up? It just ate my ass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they were taking their time. Oh my god! <laughs> now go to the very end so you can see the baby just walk off and just go like, all right. Guys, no, but at the end they get catch the behind the scenes Get thing and like the here. lions and the wildebeest are actually friends and this whole thing was just a show they put on for the <laughs> tourists <laughs> well planned just watch the, watch the baby get up it's just classic and then he's like alright and he just just oh, wow. the group. god I've never seen this I can't wait to see the whole thing yeah
Uh, what, a, what, a, what a way to promote Mr. Wright. I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. Man, it's it's like Kendrick Kendrick. kicking ass. Yeah, Kendrick 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 kicks ass she in this movie. is so cute. I can't take it. Yeah, how did, how did you adorable. promote the movie? It was great. They watched a 40 minute Wild Kingdom <laughs> best of series. <laughs> you know? Did you know Marlon Perkins was bipolar? I didn't know that. It was an amazing. <laughs> Sam's, Sam's like, I got dressed well, up for this. You, yeah. have to, you have to study some astronauts for the Rolling Moon, right? Like, they, had, they well, just had buzz know, in. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I, the right stuff is. Uh, if you've ever read the right stuff or seen the movie, but my my parent, my uh, uncle and my grandfather were test pilots, so that was oh, that pretty was, cool. It's in the blood. Although right. recently, I went to Six Flags uh, amusement park. Have you guys been to the Six yes. Flags recently? Not like no. Me. Good Christ! It's, it's like NASA right? training. My <laughs> God, he did the free fall thing, yeah. and I was like, I almost, you know, pussied out, and I was hyperventilating. I was like, All right, I got test pilots in my family. I got, I got a man up, right? And I did it a second time, and then I was okay. How high is the free fall? It's very high, but even that—that's baby games. They got these things that, like, you know, what I'm talking about. Yeah, the Superman one oh it goes God. backwards. This, this is not for like kids and old people. This is this is for real. Yeah. This is astronaut training. Was the moon landing real? <laughs> <laughs> it uh it was fake you see capricorn one i gotta see that yeah. which capricorn, capricorn one, one? Yeah. it's a great movie no which i'm thinking about the faking of mars and james brolin's in right it. yeah is it a comedy or drama should remake it with uh, josh brolin it's a it's a drama it's an action oj simpson's in it. right oh no really? Al holbrook it's a great oh movie. Well, how's he doing okay <laughs> we had buzz aldrin in here two days ago oh really he's 86 now we did you him? ask him if it was real no nah, we Not know this it is time. we talked to him we've had him a few times he was a bit. He had his own agenda. We couldn't ask him any questions. Yeah, he's a little salty, right? He, the he, one, they say he screwed the pooch or whatever. Is that, no, that's somebody else. That's um, that's not Buzz Aldrin. That's uh, uh, that Fred Ward played in the right stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. To be honest, I don't know. My favorite thing in the right stuff though is that scene with Chuck. I think it was Chuck Yeager when he's going. He takes the plane straight up. He's trying to fly to the edge of the atmosphere. Yeah. And then at one point he just loses lift and he sees black. It's just he sees space and this plane just fucking drops. Yes. Backwards. It's just such, and, and, but then he Gus picks Grissom, up. Grissom, yes. Is that who did it, Gus Grissom? Uh, no, that's who I thought he was talking about. Yeah, that's a great <clears throat> scene. That's the, that's the, that's when he finally, it feels like he's going to stop flying after that, but he doesn't. Yeah. And what was the, um, the movie recently they had with, with, uh, the U2 spy plane? They, there was something in that too, where they, uh, they were, they were reenacting, uh, oh, Bridge of Spies. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. Where they talk about he was on the edge of space too, uh, at, at 70,000 feet and he couldn't control it. Like he was trying to go yeah. down, but he couldn't get it to go down. Right. I'm just rambling, but that's nothing. That's stuff. No, that's heavy stuff, man. Well, yeah. they're saying that's Sam's got to go. And, and actually, we're oh, yeah. done too, so. Uh, are we done? Sa yeah, we are. Sam Except Rockwell, for... Mr. Hey, Wright, and hey, theaters guys. on demand and, uh, digital HD starting tomorrow. Hey, thanks, thanks for, for asking me to be a part of this madness. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate it. I hope we got something out of it. No, it's awesome. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Great thanks a lot. Man. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. And uh, we're Jimmy Jasta, of course, lead singer of Hate Breed. Yes. The new song you could download tonight at midnight. Opie, Jim, you guys yeah. rule. Thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah new yes. song tonight at midnight. And then the album, uh, early May. Yeah, May 13th, hatebreedstore.com. You can pre-order at hatebreedvip.com. I got to get you into the mix. You got to do the show I got to get you on the podcast. Yeah, we're going to do that. And then sure. Jimmy's hitting the road. All his tour dates at jimnorton.com. Our podcast, go to iTunes this week. It's Aaron Paul, Sex Robots. E Rock says this is a really good one. Sex uh, Robots with Tom Pop and Mark Norman. And Miles Davis is friends yeah. with uh, Chip Chipperson all on the Opie Radio podcast. Subscribe, review on iTunes. Okay, all right. I got to go take, yeah. a, take a picture. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you for listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah.